This one here, the mirror lied. This isn't a horror game. Nothing will jump out at you. Bitch, please. <laughs> Hi guys, Fat Wayne's here. I'm joined with... Me, Dragon. Hi. Hi, and we have a short review of a free game from... What was it again? Freebird Games. The Freebird. It's a... Yeah, a game Not studio. Game. Yeah. So they have... So, here we go. Let's go back to this, because I accidentally clicked on shit. So it's called The Mirror Lied, and yeah, like, the description for this game is so great. I don't know if it's a really good game or not. I haven't really clicked further, but yeah, right. the description. This isn't a horror game. Nothing will drop out of you. I feel like they just set me up for trust issues. Oh, and the reviews are very positive. I hate it. Goodbye, Steam. So that means it's either sus or not sus, but most likely sus in, like, the, all the worst ways possible. Yeah, I would vote Freebird Games out in a Among Us match easily. Uh... <laughs> That's a request, Freebirds game to play. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my god, that would be great. That'd be content. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just connect out with the game studio going, Hi, I have trust issues because of the mirror lied. I want to play Among Us with you. It should be after you play it. <gasps> Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why are you back on American Truck Simulator? I am back in America because... Why? Because... Uh, last week I actually was back on um, America Truck Simulator to explore a little bit of New California because I guess they revamped California and I think I've seen some of it but I guess they're not done with all of it except like here I kind of want to do this and this and like there's like yeah. they have done a bunch can I ask you where El Cajon is real quick El Cajon El Cajon is down yonder is it by, oh, there's El Centro. Of El course, Centro. this game I, probably does not have it on here, but. I don't think so, but I think it's around here. I remember hearing about El okay. Cajon. Yeah, somewhere like close Fair. to the border of Mexico. Cool. There's, I'm not going to explain why I want to know this, but thank you. <laughs> it's a 90 day fiance related thing. Okay, okay. okay. Ah. Oh, no. <laughs> I watch yeah. psychology videos, that's all you need to know. Sorry. Carry on. Gosh, I'm so just good. nodding yes, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hot mess tonight, but yeah, hi everybody. We are here. You are here, I am here. We're br we, hence why it's titled The Derpiest Truck of Talk Thursdays with the Mythical Dragon, because I feel like it's going to be the most derpiest one this week, if not for quite a, some time. <laughs> Uh, or just the beginning of like a series of Derpy Truck and Talk Thursdays coming up because yeah. Just do it like that, like part one, part two, part three. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. Although I won't be here next week, so that part two will be the lid. That's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out along the way. Um, yeah. To, but yeah, the reason why I'm an American Truck Simulator because I, I I started last week with with it trying to showcase a little bit of the California update. And I thought it would be kind of, like, just fitting for the time being. And then probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll go back to Europe. And they're like, it's like, I don't know why, but I've been called back to America. <laughs> so I went for America for a little bit. Um, that's at least the backstory that I'm going to create. I can't think of any other better backstory, really. Usually. I mean, that's fair. I was just genuinely curious, because I was like, wait a minute, we're not in Europe anymore. Uh to quote um, some Wizard of Oz there, but, yeah. I don't know if I could find the... Fuck, am I gonna get the reference? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting the reference. I'm just trying to find a yellow brick road. I should find one, though. And that's not even the correct reference. It's more like, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. See, uh, I, I wanted to say that, but my mind was already doubting it heavily with all the quotes, so it's like... I'm wigging it. I know. It's all gone now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. Anyways, hi. Hello. We're here. I'm just going to keep saying that. We're here. We are here, and we are going to have a fun time as we drive probably back down to La San Francisco. I'm going to try to actually go drive back down to San Francisco on this, on this stream since I left San Francisco <laughs> to explore California, but I want to try to see if I can drive the coast. 
down to San Francisco once again because for those who might have watched last week's uh, Joker Talk stream, I did say I have big changes ahead and those big changes are still being executed to this day because <laughs> the, the fun has started, I would say, to say the least. Um, so how do I start this? Well, I can start by asking a question. Go for it. How was your week? <laughs> Ooh, after no after a few, a few questions. It's been both fun and hectic, actually. Um, so, just as a recap, um, I have now, actually now I have, um, I accepted a job offer to work in San Francisco for a technical support position to start on the day after Labor Day, which is September 7th, I think? Yeah! Three yeah. days after my birthday! Yeah! What that car said. <laughs> what, what the traffic in downtown Evanston said. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there is that. So it has now been both uh, a, a frantic rush and a smooth pace, but I feel like it's it's just a, a hodgepodge of both, and I really do mean a hodgepodge of both, um, of just trying to find a place to live in San Francisco because it's hell commuting from the Central Valley to the Bay Area, no matter what. It, even with like these COVID times, it's still crazy. So, and long, because usually from where i live to san francisco it will take about it usually takes an hour and a half or an hour an hour and a half to get to san francisco if there's no traffic but if there is traffic it's you're most likely seeing double time so close to like two and a half or three hours it feels like days when you're stuck in traffic yeah and i've actually like, experienced it so yeah oh yeah you're, you're welcome <laughs> um so it's like you that's and that's just one way guys like so that's oh yeah one way. So that's a total like a total up to six hours and mm. if you're working an eight hour day five days a week and you have to add six more hours a day five days a week to travel yeah you're you're you're, you're barely going to experience life i don't know how yeah. people do it but some of them do which is insane So the next best thing for that is to make an attempt to find a place to live. First, firstly, it's San Francisco, and then secondly, anywhere around the Bay Area that is close to transit. Because I'm not planning to drive over there. It's hectic to drive into a big city, especially San Francisco with the hills and the small towns and whatnot. Um, <laughs> so, so my my bet is just going to be trusting on public transport, which is. For, for San Francisco and the Bay Area, it's somewhat decent. It's not like as great as, say, New York or London, but uh, it's it, it, it can work. It can suffice. For, um, <laughs> You're in a better position than I am in the fucking Edmonton. But anyway. I love you, Edmonton. I'm sorry I'm harping you on radio, but yeah. It's okay. Everyone has their, their, their opinion on shitty transportation, right? I mean, I have my point in shitty transportation if you follow me on twitter back in 2016 you would know <laughs> hold <laughs> the opinions back, force. those opinions were like a daily almost oh yeah they're, <laughs> they're great. Um, <sighs> but i digress on that so it's just been a been a fun time just trying to find a decent apartment to one fit around my budget and to be in like a decently safe neighborhood because san francisco is still kind of eh. <laughs> uh even even post-covid like they're, they're just like you know for those who doesn't know about like the whole housing situation in california there's actually a lot more homeless people than you think of in this state compared to any other state i'd say um like homelessness is actually a serious issue here and uh the trip that i went the, san, the trip to san francisco i went with my family on tuesday it, like it still kind of shows even even with covid and whatnot um, but uh, yeah so it's just been a, a fun time trying to find uh places and properties and whatnot but it's, it's, and because i said that yes uh, my parents and i did end up going to san francisco on tuesday
today for some Pokemon showings. Uh, it's been, I had like a, quite an exhaustive list of like four slash five properties, uh, which is, you, you may not think it's a lot to go in one day, but it actually is, especially if you're going cross town. And there was like a handful of times that happened <laughs> where uh, I had both my family who were already in their seniors, they're, they're in their mid sixties doing this like so, you know their 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 the their body is like is, is showing like their body age is showing but um they're with me traveling from property to property as we go by by transport um and with like the whole like characteristic of san francisco and everything with its hills and like that that was also another fun challenge and it, it was just been a fun hectic time on that day just exploring uh, and re uh, reviewing apartments, really. <laughs> or like viewing apartments, not really reviewing apartments. That'd be, that'd be too critical. I do that right here. <laughs> um, but uh, we, yeah, we went through uh, a whole, like actually four viewings in total um, within like, I would say about a three mile radius, which is still a lot in, for San Francisco to just travel around. Uh, Oh. Stopping. Go. Nice breaking. Um, great. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, uh, but like, gosh, it's been like, what, two years since I've been to San Francisco? I think legitimately the last time I've been to San Francisco was right, right when I started my job in the census. Damn. So that was like August. 2019, so almost two years. And my gosh, it, 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 it looks like a, there is a drastic difference. Mm. <laughs> um, but you know, yeah, like it's been a, it, it's quite surreal to see like a, a whole lot of changes. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm still debating if it's still post COVID because there's like a lot of funny stuff that's been happening for the past couple weeks. Not around San Francisco, I just mean around the world. Um, but, like, just... Preach. Seeing, yeah. Um, but just seeing, like, the, the... how quiet it could be on a weekday, it's... it's surreal. Because I... The last time I was in San Francisco, like, fully, like, you know, day in, day out, it was back in And I remember just whenever I travel around, whether it be during lun morning, lunchtime, or morning rush, I remember everything just being hectic, busy, you know, touchy touchy, squeezy squeezy, next, you know, you're elbow touching quite a bit of people. Nowadays, you would rarely see a crowd. Mm -hmm. It's not deserted, which is like, that's like the one difference I will say. And I'm hoping I'll have this vlog out in time. There's not really a lot of content material for this next com with this upcoming vlog because one, I'm, I'm more importantly to like look for an apartment, and two, I tried my best to capture it. Yet th it was just a hectic run back and forth. So like that was, again, first priority is apartment. Second priority is vlog. But I think I ha might have enough to like talk about it at least because yeah, no, like the difference is just like seeing it seeing like the main streets at least okay so in terms of main streets in san francisco you know, some people will think of barcadero which makes sense but we never just haven't gone there yet we were planning to but just not that day um but the other ones would be market street which is like where all the hustle bustle and shopping happens um mm -hmm. i remember just ha seeing it like busy packed whether it be a local or tourist there on that tuesday family went it was i feel like there was just only locals there we would have like maybe a handful of tourists uh but nothing of like the there we go. <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to figure out the buttons um but like i i figured like i've i, I feel like i've only seen majority either um locals who are getting from point A to point B or local tourists so most likely within California I don't think I've seen anyone that was 
outside of California per se. I could be wrong, you know, but like there were like very few far between in terms of that. Um, they said no nudging. What the fuck do I drink? Oh. <laughs> But like it was, it was quite surreal. Um, just even like getting onto BART because when um, how we usually go to San Francisco is we go like about halfway to the, the nearest BART station, which is like a, where everyone usually comes up and just ride the train, ride the uh, train into the city. Mm -hmm. um, even riding that at what time? Granted, it was like ten o'clock, so like at that point it wouldn't be too busy. But even then. I remember just looking at the parking lot structure where usually it's filled with cars pre-COVID, barely filled. Wow. So it's like, there's still a lot of people staying home, working from home, and I've been hearing, uh, like, pe like because of the rising cases of the Delta variant, like, I guess some of them have pushed back on um, going back into office, and actually that has happened to me as well, where they pushed back oh. the, um, the going into office till mid-September. Oh, that'll be nice. It is, yeah. So I'll get to at least work from home for a little bit. Um, That's good. Yeah. Uh, so like, I guess because of that, like, there's still people working home. So there's not, there's like not, not a heavy need to, tra to travel right now, especially on public transport. But it's like, at the same time, it's just so weird to see public transport being kind of empty, really. Yeah. Going into the city, like, just seeing, like, no more than, what, 10, 20 people per car, including yourself? Usually I'm used to seeing standing room only. Uh, during my trip, aside from, I think, going home, I rarely saw people standing up. Like, you know, had to stand up. Every, almost everyone was able to get a seat. So, it's like, it is a stark difference, but I heard it is improving. Again, I'm not too sure about this whole Delta variant situation. This could change, but right now it's like you know it's slowly improving. Everyone's trying to get back into public transport and whatnot. And in terms of like, like I guess traveling in general, it it feels like a lot less. Like, come oh, yeah. from Central Valley to San Francisco, like there, were, there I feel like there was not a lot of people per se on the roads. Like it was busy, but not like you're going to be stuck in a traffic jam for half an hour to an hour busy. It was like, oh, it was just a small slowdown that lasted for like two to three minutes and then suddenly you're, you're on your way. So just seeing that drastic change um, because of COVID was quite interesting. All right, no worries. Um, just, just, just very interesting to see. And just like, how kind of comfortable it is to... I'm just gonna... Can I cheat? No, I can't! I don't have this set up properly. Hey! I have to have to park it. Um... Like, for me personally, I on honestly find it nice that it, like, transport was not busy, even during those times, but it also felt surreal to say that it was not busy in general. Just considering that I'm used to seeing packed trains, packed buses, that was barely a thing when I was there in San Francisco the whole day. So that was, it was a sight to behold and just seeing how much things have changed because of COVID. Uh, no, so not only with like transport, just seeing like the, that stark difference, but the recovery at the same time, but also the unfortunate um, times of businesses closing, relocating, um, downsizing really because of COVID. Um, when I went to San Francisco, I remember try to remember all the businesses that were still there, especially at like one of the malls that I usually frequent, which is Westfield. Uh, not like the best mall per se. It's actually like mall meant for like I guess touristies and like those middle high class people. But like just seeing how many stall, like how many stores, how many fast casual restaurants have closed down because of COVID was quite surprising. It was both surprising and not surprising, actually. 
Um, for a good majority of the businesses that I remember there, I remember they didn't really see that much traffic unless if it's like s certain peak times. So, you know, I feel for them for for needing to close the business now because of the, the lack of traffic, the lack of demand for things, especially during COVID. It, it was sad to see them go. Um, just like, I, I remember like my usual a place that I usually frequent lunch and I think I have showcased it during the 2016 vlogs um, was like a little fast casual Korean uh, place in the mall and that unfortunately closed down I was very expecting it <laughs> like really wanting to eat there for like many for like now a couple of years and especially because of COVID but I guess they might, may have already gotten out of the San Francisco business and whatnot and so it's like you know it is, it is a bit sad to see them go um amongst many other places that i usually frequent for either lunch or dinner or whatever i need to grab for food um just seeing them gone and not knowing what their fate was coming out of more or less coming out of covid it's it's sad it really is um and it's like you it's interesting to like point this out because like I technically saw it here the same thing when I where I live right now but I haven't seen it in the magnitude that San Francisco had it had it with great English there Daryl but like like the, in the magnitude of like business uh, places going out of business was not as was not as great as what San Francisco experienced and granted some of them are justifiable because if you have no business and the rent is still super high even with COVID, there's no way you could sustain, especially during hard times. I mean, you can only do so much with online ordering and whatnot, but if it makes it hard for you to get the staff to do all these things, uh, these extra precautions that is needed, like very well needed, um, you know, I feel like, you know, it, it only makes, it on unfortunately makes sense to close down you know, close up shop forever and hope that you know maybe they could do it again next time but you know at the same time we'll see so yeah like a good majority of the shops even like some big brands actually have closed most of their shops not most of their shops like some of their shops within the city Ooh, here so just seeing that it, you know it it it, it leaves a a heavy heart for to see them to see them not being there <laughs> it sounds like i'm saying they're they're they've died but it's more like it's sad to see them go because of the whole pandemic and whatnot um but like i'm hoping at the same time if they've managed to find business elsewhere i hopefully they'll, they'll thrive if they're planning to come back hopefully they'll come back with full force and um like you know I, I, you know, I do want to see some of them back, whether it be in a new location or whether they come back from their, from their, from their flagship place or something like that. Ooh, I did it. Uh, it would be quite the spectacle to see and hopefully something experience. And I kind of wish I did like cover that with the vlog or whatever vlog that I decided to do. Um, I think I did. I did talk about it along the way, but I didn't really showcase it because I still feel a little bit weird. Even with like not having a lot of people there, I feel like there's still a lot of people that like don't want to be on camera, especially that I could be easily seen amongst the crowd compared to like seeing so many people and it's like, oh, you don't know I'm recording or anything like that. So it's like just being like, like you'll be noticed a lot easier um, <laughs> when I'm recording around. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll promise you that. Like, I, I would stand out like a silk thumb. Um, but, like, saying all that, I'm hoping when I do do, I, I do, like, well, hopefully, I could, like, record some of the change that's been going on around, around there, show, like, what things are coming back, what things have came and go, come and go, and, like, I wanted, I, I, I wanted to do that for this trip, um, but I, you know, I have priorities on other things, which is fine. So, we're finding a place to stay here. 
I didn't want to scare you, so that's why I was like being nice and typing in chat. But I so I wanted to be like, hi, and like scare you, but I didn't. Well, I think the funny thing is, I heard I heard movement. It's like ah, you're back. Okay. Before I saw the boom. Okay, cool. Because I was gonna be like, I was so tempted to like really yell in your ear holes, but I was like, maybe I shouldn't. Um, hi. Yeah, sorry. I uh, huh, being a woman's heart, because sometimes you're like, hmm, am I? Getting that monthly fight? Or do I just really need to pee? Hmm. I'm gonna go take care of both. So, uh, I'm good, though. <laughs> good times. Good times. Uh, so, I heard... Well, you've been to SF. That's basically, yeah, right. the story of this. And you're looking for apartments and places. Did you actually get into any details about that yet? No, not yet. I've actually still been talking about, like, changes, um... Like pre-COVID, post-COVID, like I just talked, mm. I just like talked about like the amount of people, like the lack of like seeing a lot of people around, traveling around. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's like it, it's it's both a blessing and a and like a saddened sort of feel to see it like oh you know I'm able to can't just see it on a bus like never experience a full crowd but at the same time you can tell that you know. That we're, it's recovering, but at the same time, it's so surreal to see how much has changed because of it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, my city's not as good about it because downtown's gotten a lot busier and lively, livelier since July 1st. Right. Uh, and I God. mean that in the way of uh, being exhausted <laughs> because <laughs> parties and we live near a club, so it's great times. Yeah, no, and you like at least for you guys, it's like I think it is a it's a party city. At least where I was, like, it's usually not a party city. Or, it's like, a party, party city with like two particular party areas of the city, and I happen to live in one of those two areas. So, and <laughs> I think it is the same. Th I'm pretty sure it's the same thing in San Francisco because oh yeah, where I where I was, for the most part, it was pretty tame. It was pretty quiet, aside from like the occasional homeless like walking around, right? Because yeah, that's uh, uh, sadly a thing in San Francisco. We're just homeless, just being everywhere. Oh, here um, too, yep. But like, just seeing like the you know not a lot of people walking around per se because either they're at home working at home, or they just want to stay put, or maybe they are are out and but they're just not in town. You know, like who knows? But mm -hmm. it's it was just weird, especially when yeah. like my family and I were getting dinner back at the at the mall I usually frequent there in at Westfield, it was so weird to see not a lot of people around. <laughs> like, like I could see tables still empty. Um, I mean, there, there were, like, people coming around, like, buying stuff, buying food or whatnot, but, like, I remember seeing that mall packed, whether it be a weekday or a weekend. Um, while I was there, it was just more or less empty I felt, I felt like it was empty and like I also talked about the like the unfortunate news of like businesses closing during COVID and like I remember just seeing like all the places I used to frequent no not all of them but some of the places I used to frequent are gone like they're, they're out of business they went out of business or yeah. they downsized or relocated which is you know a sad unfortunate thing because while San Fr while rent is oddly enough getting a little bit better in San Francisco, it's still very high compared to many other cities. So, um, for those who were like you know struggling during COVID, it it only makes sense for them to either relocate or go out of business, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely definitely saw that. And so it's like you know, it I would I would exaggerate a bit that it left me a tear in the eye, but it was sad to see. Yeah, it's disheartening. Like being back downtown now after, oh, it feels like th uh, you know two years as well. Basically for me, there's like local businesses that I used to see like on the way home from working like downtown because I used to work down here, um, and just like not in like closed or not open for business. One of my favorite places was Dai Pai, which very cool fucking name. Let's just appreciate that for a moment there. 
But uh, this cute little like pizza Italian joint that was all like gluten free, like vegan, very like <laughs> almost LA in nature. Just kind of throw that little joke right. out there. Uh, <laughs> but it was so good. Like despite it being like, well, I mean, despite I mean, great that it was healthy for you. Uh, very great place. And then like yeah, I saw before I moved down here, I saw that like they were closing for business. They will hopefully be back and. It looks like it might take them a long time to come back, if they can. Right. And it's like, man, really? Like, such a cool little, like, uh, I want to say hippie joint. I'm, words are bad right now, guys. I apologize. But uh, I've tried just to think like, of a better word as well. I can't think of it right now. Hipster? That's probably the better one. Yeah, hipster, hipster, like, probably... millennial, typical, like, store you'd go to like a starbucks mm -hmm. basically but for like mm -hmm. pizza uh <laughs> that's the way to put it okay that's the way to put it really yeah uh to see that go out of business and there's other things that i've noticed downtown that were like completely replaced with like a liquor store or a cannabis store because that's a thing here now right. yeah, no, yeah it's crazy it's the same thing for san francisco like i explained before where i usually frequent for lunch back in 2016 and i spoke like during the time I was in university, and I definitely showed it in my 2016 vlogs, was this uh, fast, casual Korean place mm. that was in the mall. Unfortunately, they, they, went, they were gone. Um, they, they, I'm pretty sure they have left. I don't know where they would be now, uh, whether they've gone fully out of business or it was a chain mm. or they probably relocated. Um, it was sad to see them go, amongst like many other restaurants that I remember seeing in that mall. Just Yeah. And being replaced with other things, which, you know, I'm open to try, but at the same time, man, I'm going to miss it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but not only that, but, like, also, like, certain businesses that I remember just seeing there. Sure, they haven't got, like, they never had, like, a lot of business pre-COVID, probably during the times where, like, like, holidays or whatnot, but they were, like, a very specialty store. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was sad to see, also see them go. For, for probably the same reason, most likely the same reason, because they were there pre-COVID, now they're not. So mm -hmm. it was like just seeing such a drastic change because of like the all the businesses who are moving out of San Francisco or just went you know bankrupt altogether, and at the same time just seeing the mall with that like the result of like the mall being practically empty, where I'm used to seeing it full, at capa almost I would say almost at capacity even during a normal day because either people are getting food to go home this is actually not a bad place to get food and it's like right next to BART so whoever needs to travel back to the East Bay or wherever they park to go back home somewhere in Cal Northern California you know some of them do get food there um, but just like seeing like just being I wouldn't say desolate because I'm pretty sure it is improving but at the same time it's it's pretty quiet uh -huh. it's 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 Surreal. Oh, very surreal and something that I would need to get used to because while I lived here in the Central Valley uh, the magnitude of like businesses you know places going out of business were a little bit less like surprisingly and thankfully many have managed to sustain through COVID mm -hmm. and I don't know they're, they're still there and if not there are, have been more businesses popping up and or expanding which is insane but it's it was very interesting to see a complete 180 of like this is the like the prime example of what covid did like mm -hmm. how covid affected us not only within the personal level but within you know the whole community level so uh, yeah did you notice also like a lot of the local restaurants or places like because we have delivery services like uber eats and like doordash and all that kind of stuff um i noticed that a few restaurants up here had like all three options um so up here we have like skip the dishes uber eats and doordash right. so instead of having like just the one because i remember mcdonald's just really random example here just being on uber eats and i never believed in uber before i moved to the uk <laughs> funny fact um and then yeah, it was just Uber Eats. I was like, oh, I can never order, like, McDonald's or takeout. That's really annoying. But then, like, I came back, and I noticed that they are also now on Skip. 
and, and and then I noticed some other restaurants that have like all three, so you can order like that restaurant on either of the apps that you may or may not have. Uh, is there anything the like? Food. Yeah, did you notice anything like that in SF or even like in Star or in Sacramento and other areas? Like, do you notice that they have all the services, like all the delivery options there, or so kind of or no? So uh, I guess a little anecdote, I guess because of that. I'm yeah. honestly, honestly the same the same thing as well. Pre COVID, I would have almost never trusted using any of those services because it's like I'm used to like you know like I don't need to like I could <laughs> go out or go out with coworkers to get the food. Um, but when COVID hit, yeah no like many more businesses started trying to pop up, be whether it be on DoorDash, uh, Postmates which is here or oh, Uber right. Eats. Among, like you know and amongst many others there's like a lot Grubhub many other services like I started I remember just having all those apps on my phone like all those apps on my phone and then just see which businesses were in which app and which one I preferred more using because there's like some app like some services that I prefer using compared to others whether it be um, better fee coverage overall oh hi Kyo welcome welcome I tried to um, type it, but it came out as almost Spyro instead of Kiro, Kyo, so my bad, but hi, Kyo. Nice. Um, but, like, you know, like, it all depends on, like, your app preferences of, like, where you want to order because of the, the certain fee structure or the certain tipping structure, like that. But, yeah, no, during COVID, I remember seeing a lot more businesses going into that. But also at the same time, if they were na not able to jump in, because I heard there's, like, a kind of a high initiation to start off with some of these things um, yeah some of them were not able to sustain with that because both the high maintenance as well as potentially low demand even during covid for um uh ride share delivery yeah and some of the ride shares are awful with like the amount they charge the restaurants for their services too yeah. so some of that was pretty bad that's why i kind of prefer to skip over a couple of the others up here i'm not gonna like give a bad name to the others but um i heard skip got like was giving like the temporary relief of that for some restaurants mm -hmm. so you know like because like uh, a couple of the others here like they want a cut from the thing and that's why delivery right. fees are so high and all that kind of stuff right mm -hmm. um but skip decided to temporarily waive that for like to really support local restaurants directly right. and, that, and then they added a function support. yeah and they added a function on there too where you can tip the local restaurant directly so okay. you can like put in your food and you can click on the like tip option and like give uh -huh. them a tip or give them a community shout out or something like that to really help so boost only, like their ratings only, and such right so not only the driver can, I'm sorry um, not only the driver can get the tip but that's really good that you can also tip the business itself because god they would like most more or less if not definitely they need it regardless of what you know people say about like people getting paid low wages because of they usually get paid in tips but like i'm pretty sure the ones that you know would be on there would pay them properly yeah so it's really nice that they do that up here like that was a really cool thing i think that waving time is off now unfortunately mm -hmm. but we are fully reopened, so now there's kind of that bounce back, or yeah. could make up for the difference. Basically, we're fully open. Uh, things have been really better for a lot of uh, places, and I mean, the one place that's like just on the other side of the street, or well, you know where I live, like on the other side of the cable car tracks. Mm. That place has like party nights. It like has had party nights all weekend. <laughs> It's so like Friday, they're Saturday, they're Sunday night. Yeah, they've been like, you can hear the DJ playing down there, like, well <laughs> until like 10, 11 p.m. Aww. Dang. So, how are you guys? I'm doing. I would say I'm almost like Dragon, but it's like, it's more of been like a hectic time, kind of time. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas for me, I've only had about four hours or five hours of sleep. So, I'm kind of. I'm hanging in there, but you can kind of hear it. I think in my voice that I'm. I'm kind of getting tapped out, but I'm so going to go get iced tea and, like, give myself a boost of sugar here in a little bit, and I'll be okay. Oh yeah. And it means for this exhaustion to hit, but suddenly, like, as you were talking, I was like, crash. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, 
I'm okay. I'm surviving, I promise. Um, but speaking of like those, like the uh, food sharing, uh, food sharing, what is it called again? Food delivery. Um, I haven't really saw it in San Francisco, San Francisco, because um, when I used to live there, I never used it because I'm so used to just going there. Um, yeah. But I never thought of like really looking into it. Uh, but at the same time, I remember seeing like at least where I went, um, wherever businesses like that were there, right, that serves food, uh, most of them are on those apps. Like whether it be one or a couple or all of them. Yeah. A good, like a good majority of would would have had like I think the more prominent ones would be like DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub. I think. And then, like, usually what I find is, like, the more uh, hipster, actually, I can't think of a better word, but I'm just going to use this word. <laughs> hipster ones, like, uses Postmates or Grubhub mm. um, because of, like, probably, like, the lower entrance into the service versus, mm. definitely versus Uber Eats and uh, DoorDash. Because I know those two have, like, particularly high fees from what I remember hearing. To yeah. the businesses, I went back to... Um, when ordering in person here in Central, here where I live, so mm -hmm. it, it's like I, I could see it, but like also at the same time, it's like e I guess even with that, it all de it all it's all in demand, right? So for those who like could be able to afford their thing, or maybe there's for, and I for for San Francisco especially, there's probably very high competition in terms of like delivering food. And it's like mm -hmm. the types of food because there's probably a whole lot more restaurants. No, 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 I mean probably. There's definitely a whole lot more restaurants in San Francisco compared to where I live. So yeah. the competition is real. And basically what I see today were the results of who were able to sustain during mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. But like I'm also at the same time I'm hoping for some of these businesses to come back um and if not you know i hope they can bounce back somehow some way whether it be here where it be somewhere else mm -hmm. um but yeah um but aside from talking about like covid changes the main thing <laughs> is was apartment searching <laughs> yes uh, I'm going to go quickly get iced tea for this conversation because I want to be kind of alert for it. So, gotcha. um, yeah. Yes, I will be yeah. back as soon as I can. Okay. Um, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so tired. That's okay. I think <sighs> both, honestly, I think we're both feeling it right now. Just say, yeah, yeah. We're seven, four hours of sleep. And for me, even with the day of traveling, it, it the searching for apartments hasn't stopped when I got home. Um, some of them I tried to apply for and like, you know, get that unfortunate message for some. So oh, hopefully Dragon will be here to hear that part. Um, but like others are like, I'm still waiting for a lead. I'm still waiting for a response. And then some of them I may be planning for a future appointment in the next coming days or week to go back to San Francisco and visit these properties. Um, but the first time around, it's, it's a little bit of context here. Uh, this is, has been definitely my first time not driving off the road uh, <laughs> this is definitely my first time searching for a place to live uh, in a very like drastic way like definitely for myself definitely for where, where I'm going to live almost like semi-permanently um, but to the point where I'm most likely not coming back to where I live now there's a very high chance that I'm most likely won't come back to Central Valley unless if there is a particularly good reason to do that so, like, from here on forward, wherever I move is going to start my process of just starting to live in the Bay Area, starting to live in San Francisco, and just starting, basically, my next page in life. Um, so, so learn from that, I am learning many things of how San Francisco apartments and, like, the rental process works. I don't particularly know if it's different from other places too mm -hmm. so uh you know your mileage may vary depending where you live um i'm trying to fi figure out where to move on my own too yeah it's i would say it, it, it's definitely hectic 
but you know try to make the most out of it try to make it fun and try to like not stress yourself out which is like i think a big tip that i've learned <laughs> um uh one like tip that i've no like i've no um i'm gonna like probably move on with is to limit your viewings per day as i thought four would be enough to fill up the whole day and it did like fill up like you know to view four listings in a completely different city like for for again recontext it's about an hour and a half to get to san francisco or three hours like if on a bad day or usually during public public transport so you want to make the most out of your day of viewing places with the four properties i viewed it took me about a whole it took a whole three to four hours to do but during that time, I'm not only viewing a, sp a place, I'm also traveling from place to place. So, it, it, like, that's where the hectic comes in, that you're viewing a place, asking questions, and then you're going to the next place, viewing the place, asking questions, rinse and repeat until you're all done. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, I didn't want to, like, jump in and be hot, scary. That's okay. I. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at maybe to moving a city that's six to eight hours away from where I live now. Ooh, that'd be fun. But mm -hmm. also at the same time, definitely take your time on that because, like, take your time and do your research. Cause you you don't know what to expect on some of the places you do end up finding. Um, luckily for me, it was like somewhat that was somewhat like I didn't really play full experience of like. Oh, I didn't expect this within the property. Um, but for s like, I think my fourth viewing where I had to go to another part of town, I was like, "Ooh, this has completely changed, and not for the good." With l at least the neighborhood, not for, not for the property. Hmm. Um, but like, uh, how do you mean? So, like, okay, so for like a good majority of the properties that I've uh, viewed, uh, most, some of them were like, in, at least two, two of them were in places that I know for the fact it's not the best area ever. I know Dragon would debate it otherwise, but after going back there, it's like, oh man, I kind of see it now. It's, I, I'm, I'm getting those, those, those very uh, feelings about this place i <laughs> know what place you're talking about it's fine um, but i did have a positive influence on, at least on the first property i visited which was in mm. that place right i like i felt very uh, being around the place when i visited the property itself whoa <laughs> it was a complete 180 a complete like i experienced something completely different so with the first property i visited yeah it's in a particularly very eh location but going inside it was you know secured they have their own locks they have their own security which is pretty nice not only that i remember going into their like lobby and such it felt like i was in a hotel like, Ooh. like it didn't feel like now, now this is experience from the one time I stayed in a studio back in New York City and I kind of recall it um, it's not like where it's like like there's no like it's just open where there's an elevator and then your set of mailboxes and your staircase and then you'll have to figure out where the landlord lives this one like has their leasing office right there which I guess also maybe houses their their and whatnot they have like a, they have a gym which I'm Ooh. surprised for a set of apartments it's not really condos it's actually as stated an apartment complex nice. but they have their own remodeled um, gym they have the typical mailbox as well as I guess the what I call the Amazon mailbox where if you have particularly large shipments they have this company that that where that where um, the shipper can like dial in what box your thing is in, and then they'll message you, and then you can pick up your package in that box. 
that is oh, separate cool. from your mailbox, which is like pretty interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, not when they have not the other upgrades. They don't mm -hmm. only have that, but they also have like this. They they have this like vending machine of sorts where you also where you have to download an app and then. Um, once you like entered a certain code for that area, you can actually pick out whichever things you want and you can buy it. So in this thing, it's like snacks. So like you know, soft drink like sodas, water, uh, candies, salty snacks, and whatnot, whatnot. It felt like I was in a hotel. And also an ATM, which I'm honestly surprised an uh, apartment com complex would have. <laughs> that's like, that's a little bit too convenient, but also a wee bit suspicious. I would not, I don't know if I would want to trust how they came there. But like, they also had like the usual condominium amenities, which is like shared laundry, shared coin laundry. Um, they even have a courtyard for like where you can have your, if you have a pet, you can have them walk around, as well as a rooftop, uh, which has like barbecues, like barbecue stands, and like places to just relax, which is like, this is crazy for just like it's definitely a d the diamond in the rough. I think that's what the one of the leasing managers pointed out to me <laughs> because it really is. It's in a very eh neighborhood, very kind of seedy neighborhood, but at the same time, when you go in, it's in a completely different place. I want rooftop living, man. Also, sorry, science, no worries. Darn you, Central Edmonton, <laughs> downtown Edmonton. Um. I don't drive, so I'm needing a place that could be on a bus line or something. Ooh, that so yeah, definitely do your research on that. That's what I'm doing the same thing in Sanford for San Francisco. Um, I I don't drive as well, and I'm not planning to when I move there. So what I ended up is just like comparing to like all the addresses that I see on like listings, whether it be apartments.com, you know, any of those other sites, and then popping it on Google Maps to see if there's a reliable bus line service within that area and usually what I focus on is like within no more than two blocks like or within a five minute walk to that bus station if it's not uh, if it's a particularly safe location uh, mm -hmm. just just keeping that in mind you know but no, I, I get get what you're feeling I'm on that same boat right now <laughs> yeah like where I moved to my city recently it's really great because like I live basically at the train station you or do. like one of the LRT stops which is really really ideal however my city is a dumb dumb um and we revamped all the bus routes lately like the right. bus transit such and um huh, me has been wow me has me been, has been. Huh, I have been very salty because the uh, routes that I remembered getting to the West End to get to my dad's, for example, from like university campus and such, mm -hmm. a lot of that has been rerouted or changed, so you can't quite get to my work directly anymore. And a lot of those lines that do get near my work are they stop after like 10 p.m. And I work at like 11, 11 30 p.m. at night, so that's not super ideal. So you do have to get to work an hour to an hour and a half early. Or just risk it, get off a bus stop that's about 20 minute walk away from my work and walk to work. So I've been very salty about that lately. <laughs> but it's, it's, I mean, I'm still very lucky to be where I'm in, at mm -hmm. in my city. Right. At least you're in like with like a transit oriented neighborhood in, this, in a sense. Yeah, when my f fucking city is not under construction, Jesus Christ. Construction season. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I can't access Jasper Ave from my street anymore. I have to go to, like, around the block, down the other street, like, on the other side of those train tracks, like the Ooh. cable car. I have to walk all the way around there and get to Jasper from that part instead of going straight down my street where I used to be able to get there. With no issue. Now, With no know? issue. Now it's all That's completely blocked off and, like, you have to reroute yourself three blocks away to get around. Or. That come back around and you can go to 109 kind of thing it's i have complaints about my city but that's not what we're here about we're here about apartments and have sabbath <laughs> Darn. 
and some loud downtown traffic. I'm gonna mute for a little bit again. My bad. Um, but yeah, no. So like that first list, like the first place that I went to, we visited two apartments. Um, they were pretty decently sized for what it is, and for the most part, they're studios. They were not one bedrooms, um, so you know, a little bit small. Um, and kind of on like on the very top end of my budget range so like it'd be nice to I'd, I'd be okay to live there but I'd be stretching it if, if I do end up choosing it um, but at the same time I do like it so I'm keep I'm most likely gonna be keeping it on my list for the very last minute scenario where I can't find anything else it's like okay now what uh, you know get me up let's start the leasing contract for one of these uh, con apartments really so uh, the first property, you know, was pretty solid. So I had, with that, for being my very first property to, to see, I had a, I have now somehow set up a pretty high standard of what I'm looking for. Hmm. Against the other three properties and future properties thereafter. <laughs> um, so going to the second property, um, it was like, minutes away from where the first property was so get on a bus go a couple stops and then get off and then we toured this other one now this one has a lot of character actually mm. uh, from what i heard from the landlord or building manager i don't know which one he was specifically uh, but from what i heard from him the building used to be a hotel back in 1911 Oh wow! Yeah, and it, like I guess it didn't become a hotel, and then suddenly they decided to make it an apartment or a set of apartments. Mm -hmm. Um, confusing. I don't know how to get to it. There we go. Okay. Um. Come on. So just so going into there, it's like. It has a pretty decent uh, lobby, not as grand as like the hotel hotel esque lobby from the first property, but you know it has its character. And it's, it's like very ornate for the lobby. Uh, yeah. This apartment complex a couple of years ago. I went to see you. I was really wanting to move in. It's on the plus side. Ooh, I hope you get it. <laughs> like uh, hopefully there will still be availability, and hopefully you can get get into it. That'll be cool. Um. But yeah, like very ornate and everything. Um, once I got up to like, got up to like the, the the living quarters, so like where all the actual apartments are, there were some very cramped hallways. <laughs> like, Ooh. I can, I can touch elbows and yeah, my elbows could touch the walls. So. Um, Damn, like not, dormitory style. Yeah, in ways, yeah. Um, but then when going into some to like to visit some of the rooms, uh, some of the rooms, <laughs> apartment <laughs> studios. There we go. Um, I was like, you know, honestly surprised for some of the spaces. Like, for the most part, they are small. Like the studios are definitely smaller than the studios from the first property. So in context, the first property had studios on average of like. 400 to 500 square feet. Uh, I think like a little over, like close to 150 square meters, if I did my math correctly. If not, I might have fucked that up. No, I definitely fucked that up because it's a factor of nine. Um, so, Dragon, have fun doing that conversion. <laughs> You're making me do what on what kind of hours of sleep? I'm sorry, what? No, okay, I'll, I'll give you like the context for, for the rest of this. So, with the second property, most of the studios were like around 300 through 350 square feet. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's tinier. Like you, you feel a little bit more cramped in, uh, going around in there. Oh god, dark road to see windy. Here we go. Um, but like it definitely had character. I would say because knowing the hi the history of the building, it 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 shows. But like in both, it, but it's in a very good way. Like I could see the history. I can see the, like, it's like the ornate kind of goes into those rooms as well. Like, they had, um, I don't know, like, my mind wants to say vaulted ceilings, but, like, they're, like, 
um, vaulted in a way, like in, in like small places, where like you could see a whole lot of beams. Holy shit, this is windy. Jeez, yeah. Holy um, crap, California, <laughs> please. Um. Anyway, so, um, yeah. like you're like basically, it's like the high ceilings like high beam ceilings sort of thing where like you can see the beams across the top yeah in, in ways like that like I, I wish I could explain it and unfortunately my mind for whatever reason did not record that place I recorded the first the third and the fourth place for some odd reason I didn't record the second one no which I, I I'm a bit miffed about like it's like why didn't I record this this looks so good um but it, it's like it's not like it. They try to update it to like today's standards, but it's definitely not modern. It does have that old character in it. Yeah. Um. It feels. Uh, is that Victorian time? No, that's 1911. Mm, I would just say pre-war period, to be honest. Pre-war, yeah. But like that, like that no, nice old rustic feel. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're living in an old rustic house, but it's an apartment. So like, I, I definitely felt it. Like they didn't, they didn't modernize it, which is like could be seen both in a good or bad way, where however you see it, right? But um, definitely has that character. But it's also tiny. <laughs> however, at the same time, there we go. <laughs> at the same time, um, the price was there. It was, um, like, I would say, for, for what it's worth, it's a steal. But at the same time, I've been hearing there's a lot of high demand, too, like, for these, for, because of the price and everyone using that. Well, yeah. Um, I think I have to tell you that bit. Yeah. Uh, it was well within my budget, and it was, they had utilities included. Ah! Uh, yeah, it was that one. Ah! Um, I'm gonna kick him later, guys. Don't worry about it. Anyway, but that was number two. So, like, compared to number one, like, what was, like, to compare both, what did you think? To compare both, uh, they both have their strengths and weaknesses, obviously. One, uh, yeah. for the first one, it's the, like, the odd modern amenities to, like, you know, like, it feels very hotel-like. Like, oddly enough, more hotel like than the second one, which used to be a hotel. Um, but it felt like I was getting hotel services for an apartment complex, which is surprising, to say the least, because I'm usually used to, like, you know, you're on your own if you have a problem called landlord. This one is like, they're willing to help you support you all the way, you know, but you just got to pay that nice price for it. Second mm -hmm. one, definitely, like, the character. I love the character. And it's a pretty safe neighborhood, actually. Um, oddly enough, like this one was like close to Japantown, which I usually frequent. And I remember going down the street. It's like, oh, this is a place I usually frequent at. Like, I would definitely feel comfortable living here if it wasn't for the smallness. Like, my mm, okay. like, I like I like I like experience of going through the hallways and the staircase going up the floors. It's like it's tiny. It, it was. Definitely built for the early 20th century and really shows. <laughs> Fair. Um, but I definitely did put an application in. And okay. I'm still waiting for a response. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I definitely, because regardless of all that, it was the price that pulled me in. And yeah. No what, they're what they're accommodating for that I'll put my application in and I'm going to hope for the best to see what I get out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Good. I, I was going to kick you if you didn't, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like I was going to hold off till the very end of that now. I did. I definitely put my application on that one as soon as I got home because it's like, oh, this is like the place, like, would be so nice. Like, the, like, spoiler alert, it was my first preferential place to go for out of the four that I did viewed that day. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, now, going to the third place was funny. So the first place was located in the very end neighborhood on, on a particular street. 
a second place was located in the same neighborhood, on the same street, on the same block of street, on the same block of street, just a couple buildings away. Oh wow! So I had a very, f- my parents and I had a very fun time, going to the first property, going on a bus a couple stops west to the second property, and then taking a bus going a couple stops east back to where I was. <laughs> My dad, I'm pretty sure my dad hated me for doing that. <laughs> I was like, I could just, could have just skipped it because it's like, it was very eh. So coming to this one, um, I had, like, I've noticed, like, after talking to the, to I guess the agent, and then I guess the agent's assistant, I feel very eh about it. Compared yeah. To- wasn't bad. Now, for this one, there were also studios as well, and they were roughly the same size as the second studio, so around 350 square feet, but felt had a more like open plan compared to the second one. Like the second one, like felt a little bit narrow. Like it was long but narrow, and it feels like the the mm. however they built out their kitchen and bathroom is like not particularly great. <laughs> In terms of like putting stuff around the the whole apartment, yeah, like, whatever space you have left. The at least for the third one, like they had some sort of like like a, a better layout to where you could put your bed and whatnot, amongst many other things. Um, however, this one does not have the utilities included and is in a very in neighborhood. But like it was, it was a little bit modern, a little bit like they. It's an old building, but refurbished with a modern style. So everything it's like it has like modern appliances, modern features ish in, in ways. Like it looks like like uh, definitely a remodeled apartment. Hmm. Um, and it was also within my budget as well. But with the notion I got from these, from the agent and their assistant. It feel it felt like that I may not have a very particularly good experience with them if I decide to go with them. Oh, like, like how so? Like I you know I feel for the for the agent's assistant with this. Um, mm. She seemed like she was basically going everywhere, going from from apartment to apartment. Because I guess this. Uh, this leasing agent is within like a part of companies that owns many apartments in San Francisco. So mm. no matter what, they have a showing almost everywhere, depending on the appointment. And I guess their assistant is just bingo in everywhere. I remember Aww. getting a call from the, the leasing agent and saying, like, yeah, my assistant's coming over from a different property and they'll be coming there shortly. And I've noticed that she's like running around circular, like being on top of like, like just managing many other things while doing the showing at the same time it's like she seems like she wants to like kind of hurry it up so you know i didn't particularly get a good feeling with them yeah um, but like the price is okay like the price is decent i know that i have to pay a little bit more extra compared to the second one but i think i would pay a little bit less than the first one if it comes to that point but just hmm. the experience with them eh, it left a very meh feeling with me I will consider it, but definitely it's going to be on my bottom tier. Yeah, um, fair. Um, if like if I had to go through that experience again, I would not want to. Um, mm-hmm. It's something I do not want to mess with. Like I don't, I don't want to stress out because of how they're moving about with things. Yeah, yeah. Fair, fair, um, fair. Mm-hmm. And then for the fourth one, luckily that that one was like a. A short viewing um, with the fourth one so I guess I missed out a little bit of context because technically this is the order that we went through on Tuesday however originally the order was go the fourth property that I visited was supposed to be the first property to visit oh. but I guess this leasing agent also had a busy time going through property to property like uh, but the thing is, it's like this is himself, not the assistant. So like, I kind of felt for him just being bounced left and right everywhere. So he had to make space for me, even with the, with the hectic schedule. Even though we scheduled it out, it's like I guess something must have come up, which is like, oh, okay, that's, that's that's fine. So yeah, we can always figure it out. It's like I told him, it's like I may run late because 
it is, I, am, I would be running close from the last property I'd be visiting, which was like around 4 o'clock. Uh, my time to visit him was around 4.45, and by the time, like, where I, and uh, the time I ended with the third property was around, like, 4.20. Hew, hew. <laughs> um, I clicked the wrong button. Fuck. There we go. Yeah, take the easy win. <laughs> um. Parking. Yeah. Um, but, so, but we managed to get there. Oddly yeah. enough, right at 445. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, I, I guess, like, the transit gods has forsaken me to make it in time, which I was surprised Not about. Not forsaken, they've blessed you. Blessed you, thank you. <laughs> forsaken would be like they prevented you from getting there. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or, we'll yeah, yeah, bad luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Blessed be with proper connections and everything. Like, I was, you know. It was nice to just get there and like visit this place. Now, I think I said before that I was kind of surprised for <gasps> not the property but the location. Um, mm -hmm. When I was there before, when, like 2016, I never have particularly had an issue with it. Um, like there was like a couple of homeless people, but nothing like nothing too crazy or anything, and it felt like relatively clean, like relatively clean for what it's worth. As well as, um, like, like there's enough hustle and bustle for like to be relatively safe. Going there now, it's a completely different story. Hmm. Like, I guess like the homeless has gotten further south, like more and more of them, and has kind of controlled that like that area really. And I guess I'm seeing like there's definitely a lot less people roaming around that are like the locals that are visiting places. So. Like that's what my dad saw, and then I, uh, and then I saw the same thing as well. It's like, ah, oh, dang, this sucks. <laughs> I don't like. I can't tell if like a lot of people might have moved out because of the COVID, because of COVID or whatnot. But like, it definitely does feel like a different neighborhood compared to the other neighborhoods I visited that day, and what I remembered experiencing years ago. Um. But when we got to the property, we viewed the property. Now, unfortunately for this one, compared to the three properties, they had elevators. This property didn't, and it was on the third floor. Mm. So oh my gosh. to walk up. Um, for not only me, but also for my parents, who are of the old age and couldn't really walk upstairs too well. So I feel for them. Yeah. Uh, but we viewed this property, and it was a pretty decent size for what it is. A uh, little bit more expensive than the third one, but cheaper than the first one. Huh. And I think shares roughly the same huh. square footage as the first one, but is not of like an open layout. So I, I forgot to point it out. For the first one, it had a nice open layout for the properties they had available. Mm -hmm. The fourth property had it segmented, so they have a pretty decent sized kitchen and a okay sized living room bedroom combo because it's studio. Mm -hmm. If it was built with an open pros like open floor plan in mind, it would feel big. It would definitely feel big. Um, but because of, like there was a like, wall dividing the two, it definitely felt small. Unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then when I like talk to him like about like the what to expect with the prices and whatnot. Like, the price was decent, but yeah, I would have to pay for all of the utilities and whatnot. And so it's like, it, it will start to add up. It will probably add up roughly the same to the first property. Um, and it, from there, at that point, it's like, it is a little bit iffy. Mm -hmm. um, like, it, 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 I don't get that hotel experience like in the first one. And plus, this one is like very, like, like um, you know, you're on your own sort of deal. If you really have a mechanical problem, go contact your landlord, sort of thing. Like, that's like the certain feeling that I got from it. So it's like, combined with that, as well as like, like the neighborhood kind of degrading, it, you know, like, looking at this, this property, I was like, oh, I had hope. Yeah. That this would be decent, but I guess things have changed. For this, like, you know, and, you know, Maybe it'll change back again, but for this time, it's not. Yeah, fair. So, 
Unfortunate, but I guess fair with everything going on. Yeah. No. No, you you don't know what to expect. Ooh, that was lightning. <laughs> yeah, like you don't know what to expect, especially coming after COVID, like coming from COVID. So, um, it is what it is. It, it's to you know to be seen. Um, and you know, for me, it has been a long while since I've been to San Francisco, and because of COVID, everything has changed. Um, so, you know, with that, neighborhoods have changed at the same time. So it, it gave me a new insight of, like, what to expect with the many neighborhoods I'm choosing, my uh, the properties to view from. Mm-hmm. It gives me that prospect of, like, what neighborhoods to avoid, what neighborhoods to aim for. Um, and then depending on, like, all those neighborhoods. If, they're, if it's, like, a really good property with, like, a very eh neighborhood, but in the ways that it's, like, very, like, you know, it could be safe for the most part. There's, a con- you know, I'll, I may, may consider it compared to like a good property, but if it has completely changed for the worse, sort of deal. That's fair, I guess. Yeah. Um, Sorry, yeah. I'm not that very chatty, but I'm just letting you kind of keep going. <laughs> Hi. Um, but those were the four properties. Yeah. I am trying to figure out if I want to show them or not. Actually, at least for the one, three, and four, there's po- most likely I will. Um, it is still up to me to figure out what to choose. But at the time, for the time being, I've already sent out one application, and coming here, I'm still looking for like places to like view. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, either by this weekend or st- early next week, so I could like continue viewing places. But now, um, learning from the hecticness of viewing four properties in a short amount of time and unfortunately like like how everything was it was scheduled that way because i had to meet their time like this is the time they provided me i can't really change their time because they have other things to do which makes sense especially for the upcoming growing demand that's coming back to san francisco in terms of housing um i like i guess moving on forward unless if i could time it out super properly most likely the viewings will be maxed out to two, so we don't stress out my parents because they want to view as well and be sure like, <sighs> they yeah. it at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, but also at the same time, yeah, that was a bit tiring viewing four properties <laughs> for a day. So un- mm-hmm. uh, like, unless if time allows it, I will probably have to limit it just to give some breathing room. Mm-hmm. Um, I have debates about that, but that's okay. But yeah, that'd be oh, my, my goodness. trip to San Francisco. Sorry, I like was not totally not falling asleep. Oof, hello. I'm okay. <laughs> oh, ice, come here. I'm gonna just keep ice water in here. Yay. Yeah, fuck me. I don't know why I'm like this right now. Um, but yeah, that be that may be the so far the experience of looking for apartments and most mm-hmm. likely that most definitely will be continuing on as I until I get like a, the the offer um, or whatever works out. So we'll see. Definitely, I do have some time left. Um, I'm not starting until I'm not starting working until after Labor Day which is the first Monday of September. So I, I got till September 7th to do that. And if not, I, you know, I could further on extend it all the way to September 20th when they are expecting everyone to come into the office. So there's time. But at the same time, I wish these other people could at least, you know, contact me back so I could schedule a viewing. Because I definitely do want to see the properties before I apply for anything because I would not want to apply out of the dark as I've noticed um, so yeah that still will be going on um, but yeah that's like what I mainly focused on throughout this week aside from Genshin if you guys watched a 
surprisingly five hour Genshin stream that I did. Like, two yeah, hours. and you did that like the day of your viewings, right? I did. I, I like I how I know I you. Like how you were up early, you went to bed late because I also know you and Twitter. Like what? Right. So this is like interesting. It's like, <laughs> like I saw two point coming out, and I was like, you know what? I'll stream a little bit. Try to do the story quest. It's like I have no idea. I like. Coming in blind of like knowing, don't know how long it'll take to do it. I saw like doing it, and then I'm fooling around, like exploring things and whatnot. It's like I'm just having, honestly, a blast. Like, I haven't mm -hmm. had this fun time, like exploring, and doing quests. It's like been quite a long time. Um, I'm trying to recall the times where I when I first started Genshin. I can't recall it, but I think whatever I experienced during those five hour, five hours definitely came back. Um, ah, having the fun time exploring like that. It wasn't meant to be for five hours, but no. I kind of just kept going with the storyline. It's like, oh, I don't want to give up with the story. I just, I just want to like be sure that I can end it properly. Until I realized the first part of the storyline took about three hours to do. Damn. By experience, <laughs> and I think I might have been only the first couple, first couple ones who have done it. Like at least hmm. the first part of the, the quest because I like I did kind of look at like other people stream right after I streamed and they're like within the first part so I think by the time I came home um, the servers came back up for Genshin so like how everything operates like it actually is operated like an MMO server to where mm. everything is saved on a server not locally on your computer so all your save progress and like that you have to be connected to Mahoyo to play to continue on playing Genshin. Um, I guess when I came home, it was two hours since the servers came back up. So I'm basically roughly in track with anyone else who are playing at that game at the same time. And I think I might have been one of like the first few, aside from the people who are like in Asia or Europe that got in it earlier, obviously, um, to play that part. So. I kind of just want to like you know what I just want to record it, experience it, and like how I've been doing for the past uh, story qu few story quests and updates. Uh, mm -hmm. I just didn't realize it would take five hours to do it. Oops. Gosh. Uh, I wanted to spend two three hours at most, and then probably just turn off the stream, like just definitely like turn off the stream and then like maybe play an hour until I'm really tired. But for whatever reason, you know, five hours lasted, and I was mainly a week until the very end of it. Fair. Like, uh, I will <laughs> applaud for Bahoyo for continually writing great stories and having very good story, uh, like, very good uh, voice acting mm. to come with it. Like, I played, like, I, for, for all the Genshin streams that I do, I usually have it on English. Uh, whenever I don't, I have it in Japanese because we... <laughs> um, but uh, during the streams, I have it in English, and the voice acting for 2.0 has gotten so much better. Like, you know, like the idea of like, you know, they're just like for the if you're starting from the very beginning, they're just starting out, so you can get the early voice lines. As the updates continue, as like things progress throughout the game, you could definitely hear the voice actors uh, honing down their skill of that character, and so you get to know like you get to feel what they feel i'd say <laughs> like yeah. you know how this character will speak out towards things and it makes the story that much better so i definitely applaud for all the voice acting and direction has that has gone through for this update and actually for the past couple updates as well like it has gotten infinitely better immensely okay. better um, i give up on muting for sirens at this fucking point that's fine. Jesus, I'm sorry, everyone. Something's happening downtown tonight, and I don't Something know what. Trouble, Holy crap! Dang, they're really catching whoever that is. I'm pretty sure that's. I think that Wee Woo is a police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds a little bit different than the ambulances and fire trucks that go by. Yeah. When you when when you when you start to realize which one's which, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, oh my gosh. Oh. 
I also appreciate the jerkiness of it because it's keeping me awake. It's like you hear it's like, oh, hi, but like, hug, I don't need you, but hi. Yeah, man. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> I ended the podcast recording on a siren. I was like, oh, look, just in time, guys. Here's a siren. I'm not going to mute or wait for this to pass. Let's just uh, end this here. Bye, everyone. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was like, oh, I mean, to be fair, when I recorded the podcast, I also had to deal with Thunder uh, at the same time. So the podcast episode will be featured with a few disruptions when you listen to it today, but uh, that's okay. I did my best to record it when I absolutely finally could. Right. God, this week. That's also why I'm so tired right now. Like, I'm like, oh, I don't know why it's hitting me now of all times, but... I am wow. doing the old. What Sorry. the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> doing the the K turns. Oh jeez. I uh. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I had energy before this, and now uh, it's just all gone. Hopefully we can spark up that energy if I crash into something right now. Just... Wait, wait wait no 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 I didn't. I mean, mean I mean I mean I mean I mean. <laughs> Dear Lord, I didn't really mean to crash, but I. You deserve that two percent, jeez. Right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'll do it better next time. Uh, oh, um. Yeah, Genshin, good story, good times, good everything. Hey, yeah. And I can't wait to do more. Um. I'm trying to figure out like what will be going on from here in the future. I did say big changes are ahead. Um, I didn't even <laughs> talk about AJ about like Minecraft stuff because I know coming to this it's gonna be very like weirdly enough it does require a little bit of planning um, to work with his schedule. Um, so oddly yeah. enough, um, even though I was traveling uh, to San Francisco that day and then ended up streaming Genshin, he actually picked up a shift at work. Uh, so, you yeah. know, the stars aligned s coincidentally for that one to not have that uh, Minecraft stream, but it does require a little bit of planning. So I, I, I would, <laughs> I would definitely need to like uh, figure how to like how to plan this out for a future stream. If we're both available Tuesday, then maybe yeah, definitely. Um, but seeing that he is picking up shifts and he's moving, it, it will it will change. Mm. But I've noticed like the suitable replacement could be Genshin because a lot of things came up. Fair. Um, I was gonna say I got access to my Minecraft again finally. Ooh. <laughs> I forgot uh, about that. You, you forgot that I Minecrafted? <laughs> no, I forgot that you actually had an issue getting onto me. Yeah. Stupid. Mojang, but I got it reset my passwords and finally recollected and resaved and boom I've got access to it again and I built a pretty purple and copper house. Ooh. Oh cool. Yeah. I don't remember what the material was for the purple component. I just remember I made a purple and pretty copper house. Ah, it's goodness. all you need to know. And it's really cute because when I built a house, like when I was making the walls, it spawned a fox family inside it. So I had a little bit, and I had no idea foxes were part of the game because I haven't played it in forever. Yeah. And so, like, when I like suddenly turned around and created, I was like, oh, what is this? What are you doing? Foxes? A foxy family. Wow, that sounds weird. And then, like, I quickly built the walls and like doors and kept them in there. It both sounds like a positive and negative thing if you think about it, but. Yeah, just very creepy. Just like, I walled in a whole f family of foxes into my house. Uh, yeah, fun fact, though, they despawned, because that's what Minecraft does to you sometimes, but it's okay. Oh, the nice. foxes that's were spawned fun. around me, though, anyway. And I was like, oh, there's a foxy. And oh my god, that's so cute. And it, they had um, the animation of a fox with like a little fish in its mouth. <laughs> yeah, a little fishy in its mouth. That was so cool. Uh, so I love Minecraft again. I know, there's like a lot of like updates coming out. Actually, there's gonna be like a lot more updates for 1.18, which is like crazy to say to say that like about 1.18 when 1.17 just 
more or less got fully released, what, two weeks ago, I think? Um, mm. I know AJ and I have been playing it since uh, pre-release because we wanted to experience the the deep deep caves and dungeons and whatnot, which was a fun time doing, mm-hmm. trying to figure out how to get to the end because with because um, right now 1.17, even the official one, you the the deep caves and whatnot where you can go into negative Y, um, that requires a separate like mod pack. It's an official mod pack from Bojang, just so you could test it out. With that, I felt like it may it more or less have worked our world in terms of spawning things. So like oh. some ravines were like not spawning correctly, and most definitely it was kind of hard to find the end because of the generation. Because hmm. I think it it generated all the worlds, including the portals to the end. But once you in- install a mod pack on top of it, I think the world generation kind of fucked it up. So sounds about right. So hopefully that that will like get fixed. Um, on one point eighteen is what we're hearing, um, but no, like there's been like a lot of things. I'm trying to actually recall if I ever seen a fox throughout my Minecraft live streams. I think I have, but I can't fully recall. He's so cute. No. And donkeys. I was very happy with donkeys. <laughs> so I got lucky with my spawn. There's horses, donkey, sheep, and fox. Ooh, that's cool. Near me. I, yeah. Yeah. I've actually noticed that, uh, like horses, horses, sheep, and uh, like horses, donkeys, and you know those two like uh have like a higher spawn rate than before. Cause I remember having. They were hard to find. Yeah. Like they were very yeah. few far between. Um past updates but i think oh. like 1.16 and 17 like i guess they may have like they definitely up that uh spawn counter for them so you usually you like the the chances of finding a horse is like a lot easier now which is really cool yeah um, i loves it but a eh. so i mean we still got that minecraft I st- that server should st- still be on. I'll probably to give you the IP here, since you're fully updated, so you kind of see what we got going around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, I just have a crazy late night schedule that makes it trickier to plan things, but it's okay. Um, with that, how have you been actually? As if you if you want to make an attempt to explain it because <laughs> lots of things have happened with you as well oh my lordy has as ever um oh i got itchy ears one moment uh i have a haircut and now i have hair that goes in my ear oh yeah you do oh my god if you haven't followed dragon already on twitter do because i know she's posted photos over there of her new haircut it must it definitely feels nice to be free right <laughs> Oh, yes. It's way lighter, way nicer. Uh, I definitely, it's funny because, like, I keep trying to, like, play with my hair, like, down on my shoulders, but I'm like, it's not there. I don't have hair on my shoulders to, like, play with. Um, so now I've done that kind of, like, movie star thing where, like, instead of playing, like, with thumbing my, or, <laughs> I was gonna say fingering my hair. That's a very Whoa. wrong phrase. Oof. But, you know, running your fingers, like, through your hair downwards, yeah, yeah. I've just done, that, like, the movie star thing where you, like, run your hand through your hair back, like, from your forehead back. Uh, I gotta wait for the delay. Hopefully that kind of played out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. So now I can do that and shake it all out and play with it like that. It's fun. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I got a haircut. It was funny. The hairdresser was like... Oh, yes, it was time <laughs> for a haircut. Uh, not saying that, like, my hair was awful. She's like, you have really great hair, but I can tell that it's it's heavy. And, like, sure enough, as soon as I got off, like, the chair and, like, looked around me, it was just, like, you couldn't see the floor because of how much hair she had to cut off. Like, it was a lot of hair. <laughs> how long did it take? I'm just curious. Uh... So, shampoo, blow-dry cuts, uh, about 50 minutes. Dang. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. But st uh, that is still a lot of hair. Like even like, <sighs> I was, I, like I'm trying to remember like, the like the long time before first haircut during COVID. Yeah, mine like, I remember like my, uh, hair. It's not a barber. But it's a female, right? It's just a hairdresser. Hairdresser. There we go. Hairdresser is non-binary. There we go. Yeah, because it's like, Barbara, it's like, oh, that doesn't sound right for a female. Just for, for the no. stigma. Um, but yeah, like, my hairdresser was just like, like, oh my god, you have a lot of hair. And I look, like, after, like, getting a haircut, I look down, it's like, oh my god, I have a lot of hair. Holy shit. Yeah, well, for context for me, my hair was all the way down to, like, my chest, like, mid-chest, basically, oh. like, for us ladies, boobies. <laughs> I could, like, when my hair was wet and fully brushed out, it would, like, go down huh. there. And now it's above my shoulders. Hey, so that's a now. good, like, four inches, roughly, off yeah. my hair. Roughly, probably even more. Even more than that, actually. Probably, like, four, five, maybe up to even six inches. It was a lot. And it's funny, though, because, like, I also got it layered, which I'm kind of regretting. But the reason why I always get my hair layered is because it's so thick. So when you layer it, it helps kind of with that weight and the right. the heaviness and the thickness of it. But because I have it layered now, I have like all these curly cues that like stick out in awkward places. And um, after a shower, it's like the worst because I all oh, the other night at, before work, I had one curly cue like basically like turn inwards toward my eye. So every time I would like walk around and I like, get work and the like blow my hair back, as soon as my hair would fall back in my face, I go right in my eye and I'm like, <laughs> okay, here we go. Gotta get used to this. I can't put my hair up right now because it's short, right. so I can't really do anything about that. So I'm just always like, <laughs> hair, please, ha. Huh. But it's still really nice. It's really light, and my neck doesn't feel as itchy anymore, <laughs> like hey. from sweat and just like the heat oh. that we've had. All the fun oils from your hair are going into your neck and it's making a fun time. Yeah, exactly. So, like, none of that is happening anymore. It just it feels so nice. And I actually got styling cream now for it. So, like, I can, like, get that, like, foamy, curly cream goo on my hands and, like, floof up my hair and play around with it more. So, it's really nice and it's a good time of year to do it, really, because it's summer and it's been a nightmare here. It only makes sense. Like, just have that haircut, just to be free. Because, uh, yeah, no, especially for hot summers. God, we've been having hot summer everywhere here. Uh, <sighs> it is definitely a thing. Yeah, and finally it's cooled down up here, but that's because we just had a couple of thunderstorms in a row uh, roll in. Right. And lots of torrential downpour rain. With some hail sprinkled in there. It oh, was a fun. good time going to work last night. Uh... <laughs> I try to like I, I like watch the video you posted and I'm like I'm like looking at it like oh shit. Yeah. yeah, that was like pre rain and then like basically as soon as I sent that to you, it was like whoosh. I was like hello, all right. Everything I hope changed. my I hope my ride gets here soon because like I do not want to be out here in this rain any longer, please. <laughs> right. But it was so bad that, like, we couldn't see, you know, like, the lines on the road right now, like, right. the white dotted lines? We couldn't see those. That's how far, how hard it was raining. Dang. You couldn't see what lane you were on the road. Oh, so, like, my Uber driver, he was so funny. He's like, I'm going to have to go slow. And I'm like, you know what? That's fair. I, like, take your time. Make sure you're in the right lane. I'm fine with it. Like, I still have lots of time before I start work. And he's like... Okay, good, because I am. I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> it's like yeah, fair. That's scary, combined with like nighttime too. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, the, like the, it's like it's a perfect combination for a disaster. But thank God you made it out safe. Thank God you both of you guys are safe. So that's that's one good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, after that torrential downpour, it's been quite cool now. Finally, it's been nice to like finally open my windows again. Um, also because like it cleared out the wildfire smoke. That's another thing that happened over the last couple weeks here is uh, BC's on fire. That's basically it. Like that province is just burning. And that f smoke has rolled into our region over a week ago and it just cleared away. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, 
and you can feel it like I've bussed a couple times like to and from work during it and like by the time I like would get to work or get home I can like feel it in my chest right. you, could feel, you, you, you could could you taste the smoke yeah uh, it tastes like a fireplace yeah like a perpetual fireplace right yeah and that's even with a mask on so it was it was ugh, it was really bad and then like I kind of was a little bit bad and decides just you know what I'm not gonna do this any further because like my throat is wrecked uh, from the like couple days in a row I did it so then I decided I'm just gonna uber to you and from just until like the smoke clears it's just clear in a couple of days a week later no <laughs> but now that it's cleared I can finally like go back to busing and uh, life but now I can't really do that because <laughs> my fucking boss work because uh, I work overnight, so when I work four hour shifts, that means I'm off at like 3.30 in the morning, right. my time, which means no busing. Which means you got to Uber for a ride shift. Unless I could do, I could change it up this week, I could Uber it to the mall, like that's basically just behind my store. Well, I say just behind, but like a few blocks away. Yeah. Um, I could go backwards to Westad to save some money, like for distance wise on trips. And then there is an um, late uh, overnight bus. We call it the Owl Bus. <laughs> There's the number That's two cool. Owl that kind of does hit Jasper Ave downtown here. So I could do that, but we'll, we'll see. Because, I mean, sometimes you just want to get home and sleep. You know? But I gotta figure it out. I, oh my god, downtown! <sighs> you know, I don't mind the traffic normally, but when I'm speaking or trying to do a recording, then I mind it. But can't you see I'm that I'm speaking? I can <laughs> Can't you see that I'm speaking? Yeah, nice. Uh, yay. So, there's that. Uh, so weather's been kind of really hot, sunny. Well, I say sunny, but you can't really see the sun because, like, pfft, uh, it's been very smoky and awful. And then we finally got storms because we've had we've had the driest summer that we've had in like 30 years. Right. And fun fact: the rain that we had from the storm last night and the bit of rain that we had today uh, was more than the total since May. Like, in one night, we had more rain than we had in, like, the last three months. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, very dry, very hot summer. Very smoky, humid, like, dry Sahara, like, <laughs> summer. Right. And now it's kind of like, oh, this is a comfortable, like, we're at, like, what, high 50s right now, I think? Because we're only 13 degrees Celsius, so. It's, uh, it's has really fully cooled down, which is kind of a relief. A lot of us are feeling that relief right now. Yeah. Uh, however, like... yeah, however, more wildfires have sparked up a little bit it's across uh, Canada. Uh, normally, it's just the West Coast that gets hit with it really, really bad, but now Ontario uh, and the Montreal, not Montreal, um, Manitoba border, like that's... Uh -huh part around there has got some fires sparked up and then they've had really rough storms over in the east coast uh, so kind of just basically like burning on one end burning on the next end and then being ripped apart storm wise throughout the summer it's been quite rough up here well, enough, we're, we're, we're all alike your southern neighbor is experiencing the same thing yeah yeah it's we've crazy. been breaking records like 30 40 50 year old records up here Like, if you, if you if whoever wants to debate climate change is not a thing, you have lost. Mm -hmm. Like you got you have no grounds of saying climate. This is this is not the workings of climate change. I'm pretty sure this has been the most truest example of climate change. Yeah. So far. Uh, I mean, there has been many a times. I mean, the crazy wildfires that we've been having the past couple of years, but now like yeah. seeing it just ramping up, and it's not really the start of wildfire season yet. Usually, actually, no. It's already July, so it is the start of wildfire season. But it does definitely get worse from here. Um, usually, we get yeah. our worst set like August, September, all the way up to November when it actually does start raining. 
Yeah, so. see here we're kind of lucky up here because I mean we're gonna get snow probably in September. Just fucking calling it out right now. Uh, with how wild weather has been up here this year, I think we probably will get. I do not want to say I'm gonna get snow on my birthday. I fucking better not. I hope uh, that would be bad. I did happen in a couple of years since I've been alive on this earth where it's like, oh. September 5th, day after my birthday. Cool, I'm like 12 years old and like wake up, wakes up going, I'm sorry, is that white shit on my lawn? I'm sorry? Uh, it's happened twice up here, oddly enough. But it's, uh, it usually goes away. But then it's kind of that summer or that fall where it's like winter comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes until it stays. <laughs> so I think I want to be here. I think I don't want to be here. I think I want to be here. I think I don't want to be here. I think I want to be here. Okay, I'll be here. Are they ready for me yet? Nah. Are they ready for me yet? Nah. <laughs> Thanks, ready Elsa. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Elsa. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Oof. Uh, weather's been crazy. All over. Uh, and I'm just grateful for some relief. That has helped this week a bit. But, ha, oh, ah, sleep. Um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> because... Toastmasters has really ramped up. In like a lot of good ways. Uh, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Make sure you drink some liquids and uh, lay in a more comfortable position. Uh, but yeah, Toastmasters has really ramped up for me in the terms of like. Uh, really officially starting my third club, like, uh, being, doing my first speech for my third club, and then finishing up my level three for my pathway in my other club, while also taking on the VPE role, so vice president education role in that club as well at the same time. Then also, yeah, and then also being sort of forced, uh, in a pretty crass email. What are you? Oh, 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 oh. Oh. I went too far. Oh, I know. I turned too soon. That's the reason. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then kind of being forced through a pretty... Huh, one of those emails that is, like, really harsh, but, like, for the betterment of the club kind of thing. So this is a core development. I'm talking about we had a... Austin was uh, complaining a little bit about a member... That he was trying to get some feedback on like how much he wants to participate and help us out with things, and uh, he was pretty uh, he was pretty uh, unhappy with how slow the pace has been for Austin and I to really take care of things. So him and I are kind of ramping up those efforts. So this week has been basically <laughs> me meeting with Austin like three times this week. Once with, like, another member of uh, Northern Lights, like, the club that I'm VP in, we met with another executive member on the Sunday and gave me a whole list of ideas and projects that they want my help with. And that was extremely overwhelming because uh, I gave them an update about where I'm at for VPE and we're on a really good, like, we're probably going to get our educational goals completed fully most likely by like January or even February this year. So very early in the Toastmasters year, it'll be all done. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then they also think that like, that means I have more free time, which I don't. Cause I'm also working on like other educational components of the club, like mentorship program and such. But, uh, uh, That'll be really fun. Yeah, that'll be really cool. Uh, yeah, I'm curious about more, as I'm educate as I'm an English major myself. So I'm curious about more, there, Keo. But uh, yeah, they had a lot of list of projects. So one of them is like I will be participating in the newsletter. So they're gonna set aside one to two pages for me in the newsletter to write. Uh, articles involving like education awards and kind of structuring it the way I would like it to and recognizing club like recognizing members and their pathways and personal learning goals so I have to do that and then I've been made a Facebook 
admin for our group, like the Northern Lights Toastmasters group on Facebook, to help invite members, you know, create posts, and make it more active than it already is. So I got enlisted into doing that. <laughs> and then they also needed help with one of Jing's projects. She's another member of Northern Lights because it's a, uh, you're going to giggle at this one, it's the Managing a Difficult Audience project. <laughs> so she wants to do it because that's the last project she needs for her level four to be done. And so we workshopped how that would work uh, for this meeting on Saturday. So we workshopped it out, figured it out without giving away too much because she needs to be quite um, oblivious to like who would take on what and disturb her basically. So the, pro the premise of this project is for the member to deliver our speech regularly, just whatever speech she wants on whatever topic. However, there are five members in the audience unknown to her that will be disrupting her at least once throughout the meeting. I still, I still love this prompt. <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. And so there's like five types. So there's the silent type. So you need to find a way to get that person to communicate or participate in your speech somehow. Then there's the chatterer, and this one, <laughs> I love the member I've picked for this one because he workshopped the idea further than where I took it. He's like, oh, I'm just going to answer a fake phone call and like leave myself on mute, like unmuted <laughs> and just have pretend to have the funniest conversation I've ever had with one of my buddies. And I'm like, perfect. You do you. Oh my God, that's so good. Yeah. And then there's the interrupter. So like, again, like the speaker. The yeah, like like you, what you do to me, uh, occasionally, <laughs> where like just jumping in to like a, like expand further on a point or like yeah. you know interrupting like that way. Then there's the arguer who like J like Jane or any speaker really will just make a point, and then that person will step up and be like, actually, did you know that studies have shown and like be like an arguer, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> fight back. So there's it's funny that these are like the type of roles that. Uh, members will have to do to this poor speaker like she's gonna oh I feel so bad because we've workshopped these ideas all week between like the members I've enlisted for right. these roles and they are ready <laughs> and I'm like oh oh sweetie you're gonna struggle with this one <laughs> uh, like she expects to do this speech and expect the distractions but she's not gonna expect to it has to be it's like like I'm both ready. It's like the idea of being both ready and not ready at the same time. Like ready to give the yeah. speech, being expect expecting what to expect, but then yeah, yeah. not really expecting what to expect. Exactly, because like it works a lot better in person for sure. Because like mm -hmm. being on Z that's the one thing that we struggled with. One is like, how are we going to make it work on Zoom? Because technically, our process in meetings is to keep yourselves muted uh, while the people or speakers are speaking. However, I'm going to be asking everyone to be unmuted. And unless, you know, there's a clear, loud distraction in the background, then, like, of course, please mute. But everyone needs to be unmuted so that she's unaware of who is the roles. Because, again, if you have some members muted and others unmuted, you're going to know who is going to disrupt you. Right. Uh, and then for the silent type, actually, so that's the one I was worried about the most. Because... She's not going to know who the silent one is because we're all going to be silent for the most part, listening right. to her speech. I have given her the wonderful idea of actually like muting and unmuting her mic, like just to kind of show that like she doesn't want to talk and like be kind of disruptive that way. But then also turning off her camera off and on because part of that descriptor for the silent type is that you're shy. So have to turn off your camera so that you're not like chosen to speak or answer a question would be how like this person will disrupt her. Right. And it's not the perfect solution to being like online, but I think it would work. And so I, I let, I did Austin as her evaluator. <laughs> so I let Austin in on that one little secret of the project. Like this person will be doing these things to kind of be the silent one. It'd be almost like a distractor, but it's like it has yeah. like, there's a certain um, characteristic that you would be looking for yeah 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 so I give him that heads up that that's how I'm going to workshop those ideas and then yeah with the others it'll be pretty easy because they'll be just unmuted and then when they want to do their distraction they can just jump in and do it so it'll be it'll be interesting I'm hoping it works well 
Also, I hope it doesn't work well because I also want her to deliver a speech with confidence and not feel like this is going to ruin her. <laughs> but it's a really good project and way to work, like, think about it. Yeah. Like, it's a fun test to see how well you can deal with those people because you will experience it. Oh, yeah. One way or another. Um, Absolutely. I have a full idea yet, though. I also kind of want to write a horror one because I had a crazy neighbor. Ooh, I'd say jot that idea down and then yeah. see if you could uh, create a whole story around it eventually. I was like, once you mm -hmm. can, you know, go for it. Yeah. I, uh, I had a similar idea, or well, not similar in the sense of horror. I don't like horror, so I will not be writing horror. But um, I was back last year when I first... Uh, started to go into therapy uh she's recommended that i would write a book and i was like <laughs> me no write a book I won't write about yourself yeah kind of thing but now i've like had the like a really good introduction line pop into my head earlier today so i like immediately went to word document and wrote it down uh, so i could potentially be writing things off and on throughout the year as well who knows Oh, that was hard to say with the whatever thought I'm having right now. Yeah, that was uh, not quite communicated. But I think I can see where your thought was going, but the communication was like, no, no, no. It's gone. <laughs> For me, it's kind of gone. That's fair. I mean, I don't know how I'm awake right now, so I feel that. But yeah, so a lot of those things came up on Sunday. Then, oh yeah, and then uh, they rec they made me admin of the Facebook page so that I can invite members that I'm friends with to the page. We can get more of our members actually a part of the page in the group because <laughs> currently we have half, ten. That's a little bit <laughs> awkward. Yeah, so I'm going to be mentioning it in the meeting on Saturday. Be like, hi guys, if you use Facebook quite a bit and such, uh, we have a group. Did you know that? Uh, you should join us and we're going to be posting that and using it more often this week. Or in the coming weeks. We might have been doing that. I don't know. That, that's just my mind where it went. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. The stories about customer interactions. Girl, yes. Do it. Do it. I feel like you should also do the same thing, too. <laughs> it's only so uh, Do you, would you have any memorable ones that you could think of any? Just the one guy that screamed and yelled at me for, um, I don't remember, this is really bad, I don't remember what, like, religion or faith he practiced, but they can't eat pork. Oh. And then they ordered, for some reason, they ordered, like, the one meat lover's pizza that we had at Panagoa, and didn't ask for the, like, uh, pepperoni off of it. Uh, well, the rest of the meat was, like, okay for them to use, like, chicken and such, right? Um, but then there's pepperoni on that pizza. So he came in like screaming at me, calling me a racist and just going off. And my manager at the time, he, uh, was out on a delivery. But of course, by the time he came back, this guy was still just berating me and like just screaming at me about being a racist and like being inconsiderate of his faith and his religion and like where he came from and just going off on me to stop me going... I'm very sorry. I didn't mean for this to like upset you, and I didn't know that you were of like this faith. And you know, the ingredients for the pizza were listed, like kind of thing, like trying to really explain it like calmly and right. kindly. Uh, but he just kept screaming at me. He's like, "That's no excuse. You should recognize it by my name." And I'm like, "Bro, bro, know how... really? That's not how it works." That's um, you're making me feel like I'd be racist if I did that. You know, like just assuming that. Yeah, anyway, uh, and finally, my manager just like threw him out, like almost physically, like dragged him out of the store, basically to get him out of there. Was it this manager like of, of like similar fate? I think or big wrong. Story? Wrong one. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Drummer boy, drummer boy manager, which is funny. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not the Hungarian, but the drummer boy. There you go. 
That's how you distinguish like, between managers. Oh boy. I'm, I'm glad. Like, I'm, I, that's why I asked. It's like I kind of remember you worked at a pedico that you know, like of similar of similar uh, religious faiths. So I was like, I want to be sure which one this one was. No. That's just. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's an ADA problem, and unless if you could prove it, he has nothing to prove. He does it anyways. Yeah, yeah. And then. I just have had lots of experiences, experiences with customers yelling at me. That's fine. Especially when, like, our systems crash. I like my current job, and then like they yell at me like, "Why is my order late?" And like, well, we called and let you left a voicemail saying that like our systems crashed and we were late picking your order. And like, I don't have access to my voicemail, and it's like, well, that's not our fault. No, that, no, that, no, you're right. Uh, and, well, I didn't say that. But, like, I'm so sorry that you missed the message. We will be out there as soon as we can. This is just something that was out of our control, and then just like that makes no sense. Blah, blah. And I'm like, how does it not make okay. sense? Yeah. I'm still easily reminded of when I, I when I worked at Census in the first day of hell, which was our enumerator training. Um, the, the supervisor mm. called me to say that this lady is panicking because we have stolen her information. You know, <laughs> a government, a government body, a government function has stolen your personal information because you want to work for the federal government. I'm like. Oh boy. They've stolen my social security. They've gotten my ID. I don't know what I need to do. Ma'am, we're giving you a phone that gets spam calls because we don't have the budget to prevent spam calls and messages. We're sorry. But no, you don't understand. <laughs> God save my soul. I just tell the supervisor, uh, it's up to you how you want to deal with it, whether you want to keep her on or not. All right. That's yep. my manager way of thinking. It's like, she's a lost cause at that point. It's up to you yeah. to figure out if you want to keep her or not. Yeah. Uh, oh, I f keep forgetting that my at the old store I used to work at, uh, one of our customers was a manager of the same departments at a different store. Mm -hmm. And when I did the closing shifts, like she always ordered like I think once or twice a week during like the evening shift, evening time slots basically for her groceries. She would come in and take control of our entire till um, to cr give herself refunds and like make correct her mistakes. Like despite us telling her, no, you do not have that kind of power here at the store. Like you need to go to customer service, ring down the manager on duty and talk to them and do it through them. Not here, not right now when there's no one here to do this. There's no supervisor, no manager. And she just refused. It was like screaming at us. It was like, well, if you guys knew how to do your do your like fucking job and you understood how to do things and your manager actually fucking trained you like I that was a nightmare because I was like what do we do like I looked at the other girl that was working with me and she's like I've been here for three years I don't know what to do like this is the first time this has happened <laughs> so we've had that we had her a few times and she's the worst person to pick up the phone like every time we come to that time slot like whoever I'm working with is like <laughs> it's like it's like okay it's almost 5 p.m. Violet like uh, who hi do you want to take care of the 5 p.m. orders I'm like no you do them uh, <laughs> you be the concierge you pick up the phone but I'm like no 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 I'm not going to what if it's what if it's this lady I'm like I don't want to fucking deal with her you know what uh, we always had that going on between us whenever it came to like that, that day right? yeah. the very uh, repeating customer yeah uh, I had one, uh, one with the job that I have now that tried to want that tried to get the FBI involved because the guy was like, wow, <laughs> like the FBI will do something about it. Jeez. Yeah. Gosh, that really takes um the customers always right way too far. Yeah, just believe it. I hate that companies have that policy because sometimes they're just not right. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've got my stories about works and things like that, for sure. Um, I've got stories of parents that are for, ki for kids at schools. Where you give them a call to know that, like, you had to give your kid, have 
give their kid a detention after school and they're like no and I'm like I'm sorry your kid threw an eraser at me and called me a bitch yes they will be staying after school <laughs> to write me a formal apology they will be staying after school uh no I'm picking up right after school he knows that so I'm like great then he will spend lunch with me tomorrow no he has to buy lunch down in the calf basically cafeteria and if he doesn't have lunch he doesn't eat ma'am <laughs> I'm sorry he needs to be punished <laughs> I mean there's a difference between malnutrition and disciplinary action this is more disciplinary action than malnutrition I mean you know whatever goes on in your place that that, that deals with that shit that's your problem it ain't mine yeah. yeah and then like I think the way she ended the call is like well I'm sure you I'm sure you're probably used to it by now because uh, you're acting like one with me on the phone right now. And I was like, I'm sorry, did she just indirectly call me a bitch? <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, stuck up mother... No, stuck up bitch. Because... Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I have the other parents that are like, yeah, that's fine. I was like, so you're not going to talk to your kid about their behavior? Uh, no, he knows. He should know better that's not gonna solve anything uh i've had my fair share of parents like that mediator i'm not his mediator that's your job yeah oh i did have a parent at one point yeah this is all in the uk by the way i I did have one parent that was sort of like um so just like you know that this was your like kids behavior and it's very inappropriate breaks you know the school rules so i'll be keeping them i'm not school for detention that kind of thing and they're just like Okay, that's a good idea, but what are you going to do to make them a better person? I'm like... That's not my job. That's on me? I'm sorry, when did that become part of my teaching roles and responsibility? I mean, you are shaping our kids to be, like, well-educated, well-rounded citizens of, like, you know, this earth, but uh, I didn't realize that it was only my responsibility to make them good kids. You see, like, I feel like the teacher's, the teacher's motto for, like, everyone should be like, I'm teaching everything your kid needs to know about the world. I'm not teaching your kids about common sense. <laughs> they should have that already. Yeah. I'm looking at you parents. Do I need to teach you for common sense? I'm not <laughs> teaching the student. I'm teaching the parents for common sense. Yeah. Um, oof. Get a lawyer. Fucking one of my favorite lines ever. I'm gonna sue you. Yeah. I'm gonna sue you for keeping my kid after hours. No, ma'am. Our school building shuts down at four. I'm keeping them till four. <laughs> oh God, it's parents. Oh, the one bane of like, oh, many banes of teaching, sure. But like, I just remember that going like, hmm. Some of those parent calls were very interesting. <laughs> I've had other parents that were like, I am so like, I'm so incredibly sorry. Like, there's the rough stuff going on here at home. Like. Uh, I will talk to them and just tell them that they shouldn't take it out on you. It's not okay. And I was like, okay, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't need your whole like life story. It's nice to know what's going on though, and I'll make sure they're okay and like in school. But thank you and have a good night. <laughs> I'm like, you just, I just need to tell you what's going on. I just want to be sure that you know everything's okay. And yeah. If you need to worry about something, you know, you can always talk. talk yeah. About. And I had one parent that, like, I had to call them a couple times because just this kid tried to get me fired at one point. Uh, like, actively told me straight to my face she wanted to get me fired. So, good I times. Still, I still I think I remember that story, too. And then, uh... <laughs> and then, like, I had to call her... I had, or someone in her family, like, multiple times. And, like, the mom was super apologetic, wanted to apologize profusely over and over and over again. But never actually committed to doing anything about the kids' behavior, so like she just got away with it over and over and over again. I was like, huh, I need a break from this. I remember hearing about that. I remember that one. That was terrible. No. Oh, why do I let it be go back into teaching again? Oh yeah, because I also hate retail. Duh. Right. Uh. Um, I mean, like, you're you're working at was it? I'm assuming Walmart or whatever. It's like not really meant to be a tech store. You're not supposed to be a subject matters expert on everything. Yeah. 
that's where the Best Buy or an Apple store is. Yeah, kind of like uh, my dad working at hardware and like Canadian Tire. Uh, he knows tools well, but he doesn't know the rest of the like individual departments that come in hardware, like lighting, plumbing, uh, all the individual screws and bolts and nails and the painting. Like that was all part of the hardware department. Uh, he was not a specialist in any of that <laughs> when he first started that job. Now he's he's pretty well versed in, of course, all those areas because he was there for like 12, 13 years. But when I was just, I still remember his stories of like, yeah, um, whenever I have a customer come up to me, ask me plumbing questions, I just have to internally groan for like just a second and then take them to the plumbing section and try to help them the best I can because I can't help fix your clogged toilet, sir, uh, <laughs> kind of thing. Call center for an HBO Max app, which is for the last to go. Oh, I see. Well, even then, I, d I don't think you need to be the subject matters expert of Apple devices, unless if someone yeah. knows about that, then that, that at that point you, you transfer them. But like, still, like, like for like, especially like customer service kind of shit. Like, it'd be great to know like those ins and outs, but not everyone needs to know about those ins and outs. Also, I'm pretty sure on an iPhone it's not called um, picture, it's called photos. So even like that distinguishment, of, like I don't see a picture app on the, like the iPhone screen or whatever, it's because it's, it's called photos. But like even not everyone is going to know that because like if you're like an Android user for life, then it's going to be called something different. Right. Or, like or a different. Google phone or whatever fucking million other phones there are out there right now. <laughs> Smartphones are exhausting. There's too many of them now. I know they are. I, it's great to just like differentiate, especially okay, I remember having a fun time teaching, teaching people how to use an iPhone if they're an Android user. That was great. <laughs> or what I had to do when my iPhone died in the UK and I had to learn how to do Android. <laughs> I had a fun time like, teaching you that. I was like, I hate this thing. I hate this thing. I hate this thing. Help me. <laughs> Like the, I think YouTube does. Oh, it. yeah, I think so. Like, I mean, on the browser, it does for sure. I don't know about the app because I don't have the app, but the browser. Yeah, yeah I like one little thing where you could like search up something else while you have video playing. Too. Yeah. Uh, I want a badge for completing that. I'm sorry. Describe myself to my neighbors. That <laughs> seems too hard. I'll do that later. Oh shit. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> One second. <laughs> what did you drop? I threw. I went to. Oh god. I went to throw my phone on the bed because, like, I'm going to go lay down in probably like an hour or so. Right. Or two. Um, plus, my charger's over there and my phone's like hella dead. Um, but it, like, bounced off my. So I have cookies. <laughs> Chocolate chip cookies, like, container Ooh. on the edge of my bed. So it bounced off of there, flew across the room to like the floor, like where my fan is right now, and I was like, mm -hmm. how did hitting a plastic cookie container make you fly all the way over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ate chocolate chip cookies. Uh, Ooh, I still got my chocolate chip cookie. I, I have it right there, and I, I really want it, but I know I can't because I got, I have to do a series of blood tests and stuff Oh, stuff yeah, because you have to so. fast for it? Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that, so thank God I'm not planning to eat anything. It's like, it was so tempting. It's like, oh, I no pass. more talking about food for the rest of the night, okay, everyone? <laughs> it's gonna be tempting. <laughs> I try not to. Yeah. Um, but dang. Uh, what was, what was the oh, gosh. Ask me anything, because I forgot where we left off with Toastmasters. Uh. Uh, Toastmasters. Uh, the speech. Uh, planning our Jing speech. Oh, right, and yes. Like Managing your that. difficult audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, be executing it and all that stuff. Yeah, very interesting plans and action. I'm very glad that, you know, uh, both uh, Jane and Austin are not here in this uh, stream right now because I will spoil fucking everything for them. But, uh, yeah, it's been fun to try to workshop these things because... It was so hard to like take the very vague descriptions that Toastmasters gave me for each role and trying to apply it to like a Zoom meeting context. Right. So we're gonna pilot it on Saturday, and if it goes well, 
then I feel like Austin's going to want to do his level four project, managing a difficult audience as well, if it goes well. And then um, I might have to do it myself. But for me, it's going to be very difficult because yeah. I'm VPE. So I technically have to be the one to assign the roles, but I'm not supposed to know who gets what role. Right. So I'm going to have to maybe volunteer someone to take that on for me and workshop it and get it working for that. <laughs> But I might not actually have to do it because I think I'm going to get a different level four elective done after Monday night. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> more spoilers for Toastmaster's life right now. <sighs> I'm going to just call her M because she's the one that voluntold tells me everything that I need to do in my life. At this point, Toastmasters, you know who I'm talking about, I right? Know who you're talking about, yep. <laughs> right, M. M. Basically told me I should met email this uh, person from my third club in Edmonton Advance, basically, and get some leadership opportunities done right away. And the first one is to volunteer as a breakout room Toastmaster for the club officer training oh. coming up on Monday night. And so, lo and behold, after one email to this other person in the club, I am now a breakout room Toastmaster for Monday night. <laughs> And there's a project in my level four for the pathways where it's managing an online meeting. Ooh. And that directly ties into that project. Right. And this is definitely different from just having a normal Zoom meeting. This is like managing what? Like many smaller teams during their big competition, I'm assuming. Uh, just one. So I'm joining the whole training. So I'll be there from like for the whole three and a half hours of the training. But. The first breakout session is where like presidents goes into their own room, all the presidents that are being trained are going to one room, VP is going to one room, that kind of thing. And so for the very first session, I'm going to be the room toastmaster for the vice president of education training. And my responsibilities there will be doing attendance, so as members join the breakout room, I go through, check their names off, like check, 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 check. And then I introduce the actual breakout room speaker. Uh, the act yeah, the actual trainer for that role, basically. There's the words. So I have to introduce the trainer, do the attendance, monitor chat, and if there are any disruptions, mute them. Mm. Like, Sorry. mute people. Sorry. Uh, so I will be really just, I will absolutely be monitoring the entire meeting from start to finish and give timing instructions to the trainer. So 30 minutes in, I have to let them know, saying, um, Mr. Whoever or Mr. Toastmaster, I'll just kind of be vague like that. Uh, it's been 30 minutes of the meeting, and you have 30 minutes left. And then I have to do it again, like, Mr. Toastmaster, it's been 45 minutes, you have 15 minutes left. And kind of do the little timing reminders. And then I have to also give the chat housekeeping items, basically. Like, if you have a question to ask the trainer, please put a cue before your question in the chat so Q and then like what time is it as an example or if you want to leave a general comment or an answer to a question that the trainer asked you put a C in front of it for comment and then I have to provide those instructions and uh, remember to be courteous and have your phones off during the session and mute yourself when you're not speaking or being asked to speak and really managing that entire session um, while the trainer is doing the training right so definitely in the sense you are being I'm going to put this out like how I'm putting it out. You're definitely being a professional moderator. Yeah. Because, like, you know, the difference between a Twitch moderator and, like, that, like, you might mm -hmm. be right there. But, like, like, it's like having a Twitch moderator do is definitely, like, for a professional environment, which is, it does take a lot, actually, a lot more work than you think. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm getting a full ass training package on Sunday for this. So, like, <laughs> there's a lot involved with it. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's a really good opportunity to step up and huh, as freaking Mr. Dan Mikosh puts it, get my name out there even more with the Toastmasters in the district. Someone needs to know if there's one Violet Wallace, man. Apparently. So uh, I'll be doing that on Monday. And I had my dry run of the training tonight, actually. Ooh. Like just basically before he this stream that's why i think my exhaustion's kind of like oof. i was just in a zoom meeting learning different like technologies and how to like unmute and mute things and do all that kind of stuff oh, wow. to now like coming here and going ha speaking 
<laughs> uh, boarding at words. <laughs> yeah, plus, you know, only like four hours of sleep. And then had a meeting with Austin that went for, instead of one hour, it went for two hours today. Because that's yeah. pretty much how every one hour meeting goes, is goes for two hours instead of one. I think Austin and I just need to schedule two hours every time at this point. <laughs> just hope. Just hope when that happens, it doesn't pick up three hours. Oh, fuck. Uh, we got a shot at that man if that, if that's the case. No, it's not his fault. We're very tangential between the two of us, oh, so it's God. not his fault per se. We talked about Doctor Who for 30 minutes, for example. Anyway. <laughs> uh, ah, definitely tangential, yep. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, that's all that. So, like, stepping up in leadership, getting prepared for a really interesting trial run of this level four project this weekend for uh, Jing. Yeah. Then, it yeah, it's going to be really interesting. And then, uh, core development having to step up. So, that's why Austin and I have met, I think, twice this week just for core development, basically. Because, um,. We've been kind of demanded that we need an action plan for the club and how we are going to support and make the club grow basically as club coaches. So we're working on it slowly. We actually had a very productive meeting despite the tangential Doctor Who-ness that happened a couple times uh, <laughs> throughout and looking up uh, Jody Whitt Whittaker and uh, seeing her whole IMDb career. Fuck. Anyway, so uh, gentle. yeah, we came up with like a huge list of themes for basically for the entire rest of the year. So every meeting from next week onwards has a theme or a topic in mind. Mm -hmm. And then after we created those themes, they gave us really good ideas to do workshops on some of these dates. So we've got a few, we got three workshops, at least, you know, kind of scheduled. We'll have to like plan them out and flesh them out further. We have three workshops planned, two open houses in this period. So basically from now till December, I think 14th or something like that, or basically the before the holidays, it's all planned out with key events throughout to hopefully grow our club. Ooh. Yeah, so probably the 18th might be the last week or the 11th. We'll see. We'll see. Probably 18th, actually will be our last meeting and so we have all those planned out now we just get to flesh out the event details figure out who are we catering for each event what are the takeaways that they're going to get uh what is the participation level how, how are we going to structure it all those like really finer details for each of these events so we're going to be working on that fairly soon while also you know scheduling and toastmastering the regular meetings in between all that mm -hmm. so that's really ramping up we're core development and then executive stuff is stepping up as well with Facebook page and newsletter stuff. Right. As well as trying to find time to work on my other pathway because I want to get this freaking pathway done this year. <laughs> Amongst all the things that you've somehow signed up for. But oddly enough, between all of these projects, my level four is pretty much done and spoken for. Right. It's just a matter of getting tasks done. Right. So motivate others is my main project I have to do for level four like there's always a mandatory project you do and then on the elective mm -hmm. so my mandatory project is to motivate others you have to build a small team of two to three people so uh jane austen and i and you have to discuss what are their motivations for doing the project that you guys have planned for so that's going to be our newsletter meeting because we're going to be uh, doing newsletter uh, stuff cool. so i'm going to dedicate that time and project to the newsletter and working with them together coming up with motivations and strategies and understanding the why we want to do this because uh, it's all about motivational strategies that's the pathway so I have to work, I'm going to work on that with them mm -hmm. so that could be potentially done by the end of September Ooh. and then of course manage online meetings will be done after Monday so my level back. 4 yeah, my level four will most likely be done. Ideally, it'd be nice to have it done by my birthday, but I don't think I'm going to get there. I think it'll be done by the end of September, maybe October. And then I can start my level five and maybe we'll see how level five goes. Though. I think it's going to be a little harder to. You don't think you'll be able to end it by like the end of the year per se? No, I think for sure, though, by the end of the Toastmasters year, by like the end of June next year, I will have it done, but. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> In hindsight, like, that's where my mind went. That's like, Gerald, that's not how it works, but okay. <laughs> I mean, we have membership dues and things like that, so there's a, an economic factor a little bit to that, so well done. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and then, like, the executive meeting I had for Northern Lights happened on Monday, and a lot of action items have been created from that, so we have a lot to do, and so many emails have been, like, passed back and forth. <laughs> oh. uh, and we're not having a meeting once a month at this point. We're having a meeting twice a month oh. to get some of this stuff done because we need to create a budget. We need to get member interest surveys out so we can serve our club better and our members better. We need to uh, find a way to meet in person and consider hybrid meetings and... There's so much to flesh out that we are meeting pretty much twice a month for like the next couple of months to get some of the stuff tested, tried within like the executive itself, then roll it out to the actual club and then like follow up and give feedback. So right. there's a lot happening with the executive this year. A lot of really good ideas, just a lot to flesh out and do. So there's a lot of that coming up. I have a really long list of stuff to do, and a part of it got done this week when I've been emailing the presidents back and forth. Having a fun time doing your whole executive team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's like Mikey, Mikey, Austin, Jane, and I, and we're roping Eric into some of these projects as well. Poor guy. Uh, but he, he's not working right now, and he doesn't move to BC until August, so he's going to be roped into a lot. <laughs> he got time. We can work with him. Uh, the one thing that came out of all this stuff, though, is that we might be having. A social gathering uh, sometime in August when Eric does drive down from Yellowknife because he's gonna drive down from Yellowknife basically straight south he's gonna stop in Edmonton and then, go west. and then go west but that means there's the opportunity for us to all meet in person for the very first time including Eric who has always been virtual for us like there's there's no way for us to meet him in person at all during this pandemic because right. he's all the way up in Yellowknife we're all the way down here Edmonton is north, way far north. Yellowknife is even way farther north. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're really excited. We're going to try to make a whole thing about it and get as many members as we can out there to meet the boy. Dude, that'd be cool. Yeah, and then we're thinking of doing some additional social gatherings throughout the year, like a Christmas event, potentially. Uh, maybe... <laughs> Uh, Mikey made me giggle with this one and maybe a St. Patty's uh, pubathon or something. I was like, oh my god, Mikey. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, doing like a couple social events throughout the year to, you know, team building, get to know each other outside of the meeting structure and like right. really get to know each other and, you know, outside get, just as well. get hugs. Um, but yes. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure it's most definitely needed now though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of that's coming out of it, and it's really good. But now we have the budget for like all this kind of stuff, so it'll be interesting. <laughs> oh boy, now we gotta really work with money. <laughs> yeah, we, which means we might increase membership dues just to kind of help build our bank and uh, savings up a little bit. But we'll see how that all works out and rolls out. <sighs> that all came out of that, and then actually, this is gonna make you laugh. Okay, are you ready? Uh, okay. So, Daryl knows me the best because. Uh, well, we know a lot, yeah. but you know in the speech contest? Because you visited the first one, right? Yeah. You remember the speech to your protege? The girl with, like, yes. the red hair, the straight red hair, Jennifer? Yes. yes. Funny story. So she's part of Edmonton Advanced. And tonight, she asked me to meet with her tomorrow morning in Parson at a Tim Hortons to help her with her treasury role <laughs> for Edmonton Advanced. You know what's funny about that, though? Barely know her, not part of, just joined the club, yet she's the first Toastmaster meeting in person. That's crazy. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Not even, so I have not met Austin, and I've only seen Annie and Cornelius in passing, Marg in passing, no one else in person. But yeah. someone who I'm recently connected with, I'm meeting in person tomorrow morning. <laughs> I was like, you know what, let's chat. Yeah, True. I'm just trying so hard not to fangirl because I just love her so much. Aww. Um, she's so sweet and supportive. Like, 
because I we stayed after the training session officially ended to talk more about VP stuff because I'm new to the role and mentorship program because she's building the mentorship program from scratch for Amazon Advanced. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it for Northern Lights. So her and I have a lot of like what she's done already and what I'm doing already is like a lot of overlapping, but she's had support from uh, a couple other Amazon Advanced members. I've done it all on my own. So she's just like, I need to hear more about this. <laughs> How have you done this working overnights? So I'm like, ha a nap before, a nap after. <laughs> working on just napping. <laughs> working on a nap and sleep schedule instead of a proper sleep schedule. Uh, so her and I are going to meet tomorrow. And basically she needs someone to audit her financial binder for treasurer, basically. Yeah, just make sure you know the the receipts and transactions align with what's actually in the bank and all that kind of stuff. Right. So, oh boy, I get some financial like accountant experience a little bit here uh, with her. Ooh. And then, yeah, just chat and have coffee. And she's going to try to, she wants to hear about ways that I can need support and hopefully getting a teaching role and such. And. Things like that, because that came up. She's like, wait a minute, why are you working overnights? Aren't you a teacher? And I was like, ha ha. Long story short, here we go. (laughs) So they're wanting to try to find a way to help me out with that uh, situation Mm -hmm. this year. So yeah, I I just find it very funny that like this person I met in a speech contest, not even in a regular Toastmasters meeting, is the first Toastmaster I'm sitting down having a conversation with in person. I'm going to make Austin so jealous. It's going to be great. Okay, guess who I talk to? Hello, mother effer. <laughs> I love you, Austin. Uh, he's met Marg in person. He went berry picking with Marg, uh, like, oh. the other day. What? And, like, he's been to their houses and has delivered Toastmasters and things to them. So he's met people in person. Just not me. <sighs> rude. rude. But anyway. <laughs> in unison. Rude. Yeah, uh, but it's funny. We both agree that if we do club coach meetings in person, real soon, it's gonna be in a Starbucks or Tim Hortons where we have an endless flow of coffee near us. Because that is definitely needed. Because we were both feeling the exhaustion today, so we were like just sipping coffee like crazy right. throughout our meeting. Uh, so we both agreed, like no matter what, coffee has to be in the location and the place. I'm like, I agree wholeheartedly. That's fair. Very fair. Yeah, but it looks like some of us might be meeting in person a bit sooner than later, uh, at least for core development, because uh, we're a tiny little baby club with just the full members. Uh, so you guys could actually do meet in person if needed. If yeah, we want to do that to kind of really do more executive things, you know, outside of the regular meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, so meeting in person would be a great opportunity to do that. Go for like a drink or coffee or wherever really, and then... Uh, like flesh out some more of the details to make our club grow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so a lot going on that way. Yeah. Uh, I can tell that you probably want to end this <laughs> very soon, but I still have way more many updates to give you. But because uh, no. I haven't even gone to the podcast or Stardew Valley ending or even the new series yet, because that started before. I was able to join this truck and talk again. Mm-hmm. I know. We did talk about it prior to the thing. God. Yeah, me like getting excited. Like, this Saturday, uh, Unique History will be starting on the channel. And, well, it's been two weeks, so. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I have three videos a week up on YouTube right now. It's been really good and productive. Although, I slipped a little bit this week and uploaded late. But I will fix that. I will be better. Hey, you've been busy. <laughs> As you can tell. (laughs) Things come about, like, yeah. Um, But, like, I know, like, you have, hey, you you have your new new history podcast going, then you, um, (laughs) I'm sure it looks like you're having a fun time just still speaking about that history, because, yeah, what (laughs) came about from um, your Dragon's Den, and then suddenly became your, really, your new series. Yeah, it's really fun, and definitely when I say unique history, it's it's unique. Because um, what are the two topics I have so far? Um, oh, the enchanting history of charisma. That's a fun one. I really recommend listening to that one. 
And then, oh yeah, the prince and the devil dog. So when I say unique history, guys, I there you go, devil dog and history of charisma. <laughs> Uh, this week will be an interesting topic. I'm not going to spoil that though, because go to the channel to find out. But it's a fun one. Don't subscribe if you haven't already. Please, like, please, if you haven't done it, do it. Yeah, get me to that nice round number, please. Yeah. I'm still at, <laughs> I'm still at just the, just the 28, and it would be just nice to get 30. If I get 30, I can stop talking about subscribers for the rest of my life. I'm very happy. <laughs> Yeah, but um, very busy couple of weeks. Only gonna get busier as time goes on. More things to come. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, podcast. I'm gonna quickly talk about that real quick. I'm starting up today is the series of streaming. Basically, get started on the podcast. So, I'll be doing a series. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, yeah, you're all alone. Uh, let me do some self promotion. Uh. For the next few weeks, we're going to be sticking to the topic of streaming experiences. So I started today by sharing my streaming experience um, in the podcast. Um, the following week, I have uh, three guests lined up to talk about their streaming experiences. And I'm very excited. I get to do some interviews and hear about everybody's experience with streaming and hear their future plans for it as well. So it's going to be a very exciting few weeks to have these amazing guests come on the podcast. I heard the guest list. It's pretty good, actually. Oh, yeah. One surprise, too, which is amazing. Oh, one really, really big surprise that I'm still surprised you said yes to, so I'm very excited. That will be coming up in three weeks' time. Yeah. But, yeah, so that's been really good. And Stardew you ended. And my finale gets me... I recorded every single day in Stardew Valley for a whole year in the game. And it took 25 weeks. Almost half a year in real life. To do that. So I did all that. And then the plan for that is basically to play on my own. But still record it. Basically, like, kind of do like a couple... Oh. Words. <laughs> basically, like, play it on my own for two hours and record those two hours. And then do highlight reels. So, like, if a special, like... Uh, character event happens or if a special holiday happens or something quirky or neat or unique happens I can just highlight reel it and update people on the farm as I go so those videos will sprinkled maybe like once a month kind of idea um, to keep it going and updates and show what's new yeah, like Stardew update sort of deal. yeah like special Stardew update uh, <laughs> that will kind of continue on with like the series basically but to fill that Monday slot, I will be starting a series of gameplay of Freebird Games. So that's the company, the studio, the development, whatever words. And I'm going to be starting with their first game, To the Moon. Um, so I'll be starting To the Moon this Monday. I'm going to play through all that, see how long it takes me. Holy crap. And then move on to A Bird Story, then Finding Paradise, and then supposedly uh, uh, imposter factory i think is the next one that is supposed to be a sequel to to the moon that game will be released sometime in the next year or two so it'll be nice to kind of play these games in succession and see where i get curious question i know i know we kind of talked about this off stream you you've played some of these games before right i have played to the moon and a bird story but I don't remember a bird story at all very well. I remember it being like a sweet sort of, oh man, kind of story. Like it just hits you kind of at the last right. moment where it's like, oh, all right, beautiful story, Jesus Christ. And but I, I very clearly remember To the Moon, and that's because I've seen three different YouTubers play it from start to finish. <laughs> I played it from start to finish back in 2013. And I haven't revisited since, so I'm really looking forward to kind of going through the emotions of that again. In, in a mature's eye. Who knows, right? <laughs> sort of deal. Yeah, we'll see what I've learned in the, what, eight, a whole eight years since I've played it. Right. Oh, that's been eight years. It'd be interesting so. to note if it, like, 
No, like, because I was like, you, you say that, right? It's like, um, you haven't played in eight years. It's like, wonder, like, would you ever get the feeling of, like, has this game aged well sort of deal? Oh, that'll be interesting, because a lot of games have been made in that kind of RPG style since then, so it might be just kind of fits that mm-hmm. niche of games, I guess. But right. we'll see, we'll see. I'm hoping, I'm sure, I don't know. I just, I love, I'm biased to the game, I love it. So I'm like, it, yeah, it'll always right. age well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it all age well in your eye. I mean, which, which all that makes sense and would make a fantastic gameplay. Yeah, it ages well like a fine wine. But uh, that's We're all those sure updates. Like <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. Uh, I am eventually thinking of replacing Mondays for gaming. Um, eventually, I just don't know what to do. Because uh, future plans, I kind of revealed this a little bit in the stream. Or whoa, podcast episode today that I would like to return to streaming again sometime. Mm-hmm. But on a slower, less frequency. <laughs> Like, maybe once a month to start out with, and then maybe once a week. Who knows, really? Um, so that I can do all my gaming via stream. And then keep additional content for the channel. Because right now, gaming is the only thing that is out of place. Because I've got the Unique History podcast going on. I've got the Personal Dragon's Den Journey podcast. And then gaming. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of, like, what could be a third good series that would relate to these other two well uh, I don't have any ideas right now per se I was thinking maybe education related but I am by far not an expert on education yet just starting this career but uh, who knows I'm trying to think of something to do with that one well you would yeah you may, well maybe but there's always the issue of my what face topic, yeah. there's also the issue of like recommending not showing my face on the right. channel, so if I vlogged, it would just be purely a third-person camera. Right. Not third-person camera. I don't know, but first-person view? Like third person view? Yeah, third-person view. So when you wouldn't see my face, you would just hear my voice as I walk through the neighborhoods, but... Could do it. I can show you all the fucking construction going on in my city if I would like. Just kind of walk down and tell you all some stories and updates and be like, look at this shit! Just just do a me what I used to do long before and well today. It'd be like, whole bunch of B-roll. Talk over the shit. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm thinking about that. But right now, Mondays will stick to being gaming until I can kind of workshop what else I can do. Mm-hmm. Could make it a Toastmasters corner. Could it be like doing like Toastmasters, like, like a, either five minute lesson update or whatever like that. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. There's a lot. There. It will not be five minutes. <laughs> Please. I'm part of three clubs, man. And it's going to be like 15, 20 minute updates. <laughs> With all the crazy projects I'm a part of and roped into. Right. And then you could do like lessons of like speech and whatnot, which would be like definitely your, honing your thing. Yeah. So think about it. I, oh, I could call it VPE Corner. Oh. So, sorry, ideas just kind of came to me because I am VP. <laughs> I could discuss like how I develop the themes for the rest of the year because that's also something I've done. Wow, I've done more Toastmastering than I thought this past <laughs> couple weeks. Oh, I've developed themes for every weekly meeting for Northern Lights until the end of the year as well as core development. Yeah. Hey, idea. <laughs> there you go. Nice. That's how I'm going to end my update. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That, 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 that was like the best timing ever for an update. Oh, that, hi, hi, Percy. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> I like my pillow was not high enough to cover that shit. <laughs> I'm just going to throw these down for y'all since I've talked and there's been things going on, but yeah. yeah. Uh huh. That's me. That's what I've been going through. A lot of Toastmastering, a lot of YouTubing, mm-hmm. a lot of tweeting, quote unquote. Oh. You, you <laughs> a lot. Like, like yeah. even like considering like everything that I've been doing, like of just with my thing, I see your Twitter and all that stuff. It's like, well, hot damn. Yeah, I didn't even talk about work in this uh, in this stream, but I don't really want to because work sucked. Phew. 
Hey, there you go. You talked about it. That's all we need to know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, so there's my things. Uh, do the subscribing. And uh, if you like what you see and want to hear more from me, do the Twitters. And then if you want to give me coffee, because obviously I need it, please just give me coffee. Joe. And then, yeah, Dragon's Den is directly linked there for the full playlist. And the next, so this week and the next three weeks will be all streaming related. So it'll be really fun to hear other people's journeys with streaming. That'll be fun, actually. Just like hearing about this is like, like hearing about yourself, like going from gaming then to streaming. It's like it all like now interconnects and just hearing how yeah. everyone deals with, um, <laughs> like actually they yeah, no, like their true personal experience of uh streaming and whatnot so like, i can't wait to hear mm-hmm. like everyone else's story as well me too because i've developed interview questions for them so it'll be really great and if you listen to the podcast episode today basically what i ask myself in today's episode is what i'm gonna be asking the other so it'll be really good to listen to that one for a good context yeah just have that have that sort of baseline and then work with everyone else that's like hearing that it's like ooh yeah, that is basically. <laughs> yeah, that's basically all of me. If you'd like to come to a Toastmasters meeting and want to come to a tiny little club that needs some boosting, come to Core Development. We meet every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Let me know if you're interested, and let's get you more confidence and work on your speaking skills. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Just plugging that last little thing in there. I don't have a website or link to give you, but uh, reach out DM to her. me and I will get you there. We're working, we're developing the website as we go. So uh, we will get there and we'll have something more concrete mm-hmm. in the near future between the millions of things that Austin and I have to do for that poor club. <laughs> but until then, Aww. if you want to come and see what it's all about, it's an only an hour long meeting in the morning and it's really good fun. And promoting. Woohoo, all the shit. And if you want to come see me in action, it's VPE. Saturdays. I'm done. I'm not promoting that one. We have 20 members. We're fine. Austin would beg to differ. Speak it from the VPE herself. Yeah. VPM would have choice words with me, but um, it's fine. Austin can. Don't worry about it. Austin can figure it out himself. It's okay, he doesn't watch this, so we're fine. You're, you're exactly. safe. I'm very tired, guys. Uh, Austin's great. He's BPM. If you want to come join Northern Lights, we meet at 9.30 in the morning on Saturdays. There you go. Ugh. And just message me for all the details, because I have all of it. In my noggin. In your noggin. In your notebook. <laughs> and your pooper. And words. Yes! Yes! Uh, all right, this, is, this has been the derpiest so far, huh? <laughs> Wheel, I was falling asleep in the first half of the stream and I'm wide awake and I shared my life with you. Hey, hey we, we now got the whole life of Dragon, at least for this week. And we'll stop and words. Yeah, the most important update of all is I had a haircut. There you go. Hey, that, there we go. That, that, that's all we need to know. <laughs> Oh. Everything else is just extra. I was about to say peach. 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 Okay, maybe I should probably end the stream before it goes stupid. Way too late. It's not like it hasn't already. So yeah, go follow Dragon if you haven't already. Please subscribe to her if you haven't already as well on YouTube. Get her to thirty if you have. If you're not subscribed to her, what are you doing? Go to her channel, subscribe to her, and listen to her amazing voice speaking about everything of, like, personal stuff, and, like, actually, like, yeah, and uh, unique history that comes out every Saturday. I, I have a feeling I should probably create a command just in case. One day. When, when that playlist builds up, right? I mean, no, it's probably building up anyways. Sure. <laughs> Words. Yep. Unique history. Um, so do go follow her if you haven't already, and I guess you know you can follow me as well if you haven't. You know, if you watching this on the VOD, follow me on Twitch. It's, there should be a link down below in the description. Otherwise, if you're here in chat, go follow me on Twitter, which I think I already posted once. Well, I'll do it again. Here, Twitter, YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to me already, feel free. 
this usually gets uploaded every week. Hopefully you had a fun time watching three hours of derpiness, which I realize it's almost three hours of derpiness now. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Uh, sure, I'll just put the Instagram. I haven't posted anything yet. I need to find... A, I actually do have a couple photos I wanted to post, but I'll, I'll post it in due time for like San Francisco and all that fun stuff. There have been some cool shots that I've got. Um, and yeah... Uh, if you haven't followed me or her already, please do get those numbers up. We all feel proud. We could produce more shit for you guys, I guess. Mm-hmm. We work goes. very hard for your entertainment. Yeah. She, 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 <laughs> she, see, she speaks it out better than me. Why was that so hard to say? And the only reason why I'm such a good talker is because of Toastmasters. So please join. I'm done promoting. Have a great night. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I gotta thank you so much, Dragon, for joining with it, joining with me with all the fun derpy stuff that we did for our whole almost three hours of talking. Hence why it's the derpiest drunk talk Thursday ever, or so far. Hmm. Yes. Uh, thanks for having me, and I'm always glad to come here and talk. I really, really need these uh, streams for just to get everything off my chest. So thank you. Yeah. No worries. I'm glad to hear. All the fun achievements and crazy shit that we all go through, right? (laughs) That you go through, that I go through, we all go through, sort of deal. It's a fun way to capture that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah. Uh, In any case, I hope you guys do have a great day, or night, wherever the heck you are. Uh, in terms of the next stream, we'll see. I'm going to be asking AJ if we're going to be doing Minecraft Tuesdays next week. Otherwise, I might stream more Genshin. Or tune in for the next time on Truck and Talk Thursdays. Uh, that is a dragon over there. Somewhere over there. I think we're all dying. So, dragon over there. Spam over Hi. here. Uh, bye. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst outro ever. It really is because I was like also typing out school stuff because I realized I have a class that technically starts tomorrow night, oh. but I only have two learners enrolled and I technically need three to make D and D work. Oh. Um, so I'm creating the post, just letting the class know, going like, "Hello." <laughs> My voice just went <laughs> died. Um, I basically just said, hello class, I've been doing my best to at least have one more student sign up to our campaign to ensure that we have the minimum of a party of three for more action and interaction. However, that has not happened as of tonight. I may delete the start of this campaign for just one more week as I reach out to past learners to see if others can join. Until then, please, post here and tell me about your characters. What race is your character? What class are they? Names? Quirky qualities? Anything. And then I put teacher by love. Hey. See, she's still being a teacher. By the way, I'm still alive. I haven't noticed ah! that button yet. <laughs> So now they know, hey, she's doing that too. She has a lot of things to do. Anyways, I'll be ending this stream. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.